Hello, hello everybody and welcome to today's American Academy Tournament. Today's tournament is about American Academy coming over to Duel Academy and having a match with all of their students. The best students of American Academy will be coming over as they do not have good funding, they can't bring every single student over, but the best of the best are coming over to Duel, our Duel Academy fa uh, fan favorites. So, without further ado, we're gonna talk about which characters are going to matter today and what's going on. The first thing that matters is that today's tournament was not something that Chancellor Shepard wanted to do or anybody else at Dole Academy, but they were forced to do it because Yami Pegasus himself asked for this. This tournament between both American Academy and Dole Academy. American Academy is suffering financially and does not have many things, you know, putting in money. Duel Academy is starting to get more money after their big GX tournament was a huge success. Having their uh, one of their top students take down the freaking uh, pro duelists that were able to come over. So, let's get excited. Let's see if these American Academy students and teachers can do real good against our Duel Academy teachers and students. And we're going to see which Academy has the strongest students. Even though we all believe Duel Academy should be stronger, who the hell knows what freaking American Academy has up their sleeve. So, let's go ahead and let's get into our character roundup. I hope you're all excited as there's going to be a lot of surprises today and some of you might even rage, but you know, that's part of the plan. <laughs> uh, the first character we're going to be talking about is Professor Stein of the American Academy. This is one of our American professors. Professor Stein works for the American Academy. His school was gifted a whole new series of cards, which we did get to see during that last underground tournament. He was able to show off those cards. His tyrant Neptune made some waves in the underground, and now he can test it against Duel Academy. So against the underground, it actually did have some good results. The problem is that there's just so many heavy hitters in the underground, and you know, there's a freaking Band Exodia deck down there, so you gotta be very scared. Professor Stein, though, is now going to be fighting a bunch of children and some professors, so I'm sure he feels a lot more confident today, and I'm sure his Tyrant Neptune deck is going to do a lot better. We'll see how he does, and uh, good luck to the professor from American Academy. Blair Flanagan is missing! Blair was pissed off after receiving a $20 Shakey's Pizza gift card for winning the GX tournament. She was last seen in her room a week ago. No one seems to know where she is. Blair Flanagan, one of the most important students at Duel Academy, the one that actually made them as popular as they are, has gone missing. She's gone. Someone's got to go look for her now. Let's move on. Saika Kohinata of American Academy. Saika used to be a student at Duel Academy. She transferred to the American campus to get away from Alexis Rhodes. Now she is one of the top 10 duelists on the American campus. Saika is an interesting duelist as she does have some really powerful reptile cards, and her reptile cards balance pretty well with her tribute boss monster. And that boss monster's abilities are pretty annoying. So, we're going to see how this planetary duelist does today. All the top 10 duelists and, and stuff at a, from American to campus are going to be really scary. So, good luck, Saika, Kohinata. Your reptile deck, your Lamia, your evil dragon, Anata. I'm trying to think of other reptiles she uses. This weird alligator thing. I mean, we got to see a lot of it yesterday, but I'm hoping we get to see more of it today. Cyrus Truesdale, Apprentice. Cyrus was measured to be a rather poor student. The Biobands barely put him above dropout level. This Academy Tournament was supposed to be an important day for him, but he is beyond worried. And he's not worried about dueling, he's worried because people are missing. People he cares about are missing. The Slifer Reds are missing. <laughs> So yeah, Cyrus Truesdale's just in a bad mood lately. He's also, he saw his brother lose in the underground tournament, so he's really freaking out. He hopes his brother is okay. He hopes that he could do better in school so that he can get to the pro league as soon as possible, or at least get strong enough to go to the underground league. But as of right now, Cyrus Truesdale is just an apprentice, and he has a lot to live up to. Those roids just don't seem to work. Tanaka! Fiery Duelist! 
Tanaka was rated pretty low for a guy who won a tournament. This doesn't concern him though, as his friends have gone missing. So man, so man, this kid, oh, wait. So man, kids keep, so many kids, sorry, there was a Y that was supposed to be there. So many kids keep going uh, missing at Duel Academy. Yeah, there's a lot of kids that just keep going missing and that is not a good thing. Tanaka is like, what the hell? I know Blair was concerned about this, but now the person that was the most concerned is missing. So what the hell? Do I need to start taking over for this? I don't know. Maybe Tanaka will, but he needs to do well in today's tournament to show off. And if he shows off, maybe he'll get some more control over the school. Or maybe showing off is the very thing that's making him or making students go missing. He's got to be careful. Good luck to you, Tanaka. Sorry that you got rated so low, but welcome to Season 2, buddy. Velian Crowler of Raw Yellow. Professor Crowler has been ordered to make Duel Academy look good today. If he can win today, he may even be able to get that promotion he craves. Relian Crowler has a pretty good Ancient Gear deck. After Duel Academy Season 2, we saw that there is a lot of potential in his deck, and he probably could beat a lot of people with a good bracket. Now he also needs to take out some American Academy uh, people just to show that he is a proper professor, and deserves to go back to Opla's Blue Professor. Being a raw yellow professor definitely does not suit him, he does not like it, but we're going to see if he can prove himself today, and if he can become the professor he wants to be. Good luck to you, Veli and Crowler. Professor Sartier of American Academy! An American professor! Professor Sartier was hired by Principal McKenzie not long after he got fired from Duel Academy. At the American campus, Professor Sartier was molded by the principal into a fine dueling teacher. In other words, Professor Sartier never talks about curry anymore during any of his lessons. He has strict guidance from the principal. And because of this, he actually has a deck made by American Academy, a planetary deck. That's right, they scooped up one of Duel Academy's professors, which means now they have info on Duel Academy and the stuff that was going on there. On top of that, that professor is now dueling on their side with a planetary deck using, I believe, Uranus. So, good luck to Professor Sartier, and uh, I hope American Academy suits you, because Duel Academy gave you the boot. Tyranno Hassleberry! A raw yellow superior duelist. Tyranno was not happy with his bio ban rating. He is hoping that if he manages to tear apart some American Academy students, he will be given a nice upgrade. His dinosaur cards are much stronger now. Now that we know that his fusion stuff doesn't work, you don't gotta worry about that anymore. He just has more dino focus cards. And his more dino focus cards are gonna help him get Alex cards like Ultimate Tyranno, Super Conductor Tyranno, and of course even that Super Ancient Dino Beast. So this guy is probably the highest attacking Dino Duelist in the game. He has such powerful cards that he can overpower most people in this tournament. The only one that used to overpower him was like Zane Truesdale, and he's not here anymore. This is Season 2 area, so we have nothing to worry about when it comes to Zane. Good luck to Tyranno. Maybe he can take down some American Duelists. Maybe he can overpower some of these planetary cards, but it does take some combos to get there, so I wish you luck, my friend. Bastion Misawa, Raw Yellow Superior Duelist. Bastion is upset that his bio rating said he was a mere superior duelist. His only hope to change his rating is to knock out some of the American students. If his deck fails, he will just make a new one. His deck has done better ever since he got better support for the Water Dragon stuff, but it still doesn't feel good enough for Bastion. If his deck fails again today and doesn't take him all the way, he might decide to change his deck once again, as this guy cannot just freaking decide on one deck. He has too many decks in his mind, too many theories. We're going to see if those new decks are worth it, and we're going to see how he does today. This superior duelist is one of the best at the academy, but he's been knocked off by uh, some of his fellow classmates. So good luck to you, Bastion, and hopefully you summon a water dragon today. Thelonious Viper, the Blue Dorm Professor. Professor Viper has been excited about today's tourney. In his mind, this tournament should provide just enough juice to accomplish a mission he has been on for over a year. This man has been working real hard on his technology and his theories and his 
oh, this is what I need to get the energy I need to create the thing that I need. And now he believes he is near completion. All he needs is a little bit more dueling energy. And the Biobands are definitely going to be going haywire today, as the duels should be intense going up against American Academy's Planetary Cards, a series of cards with a lot of darkness behind them. Leslie is here. Leslie is a student studying to draw cards for Industrial Illusions. She loves brutal effect monsters and has some wicked ideas for new monsters for Industrial Illusions. She was chosen as one of their top planetary duelists. That's right. Leslie is an American Academy duelist. She's one of their Slifer Red students, and her goal in life is to become one of the card artists. She wants to draw cards for duel monsters, but her focus is more on effect monsters. So we're going to see how Leslie does, and we're going to see if she can accomplish her dream and go work for Industrial Illusions. Of course, in order to do that, she needs to further American Academy's goals, and she's super excited to be using one of the planetary cards created by Yami Pegasus himself. Jim Crocodile Cook, Obelisk Blue Elite Duelist. Jim was rated as one of the strongest duelists at Duel Academy. This doesn't concern him as much as these American duelists do. He can sense some dark energy from their decks. The principal has a really dark energy about him as well. Yeah, Jim Crocodile Cook always had the ability to sense stuff. Him and uh, Shirley or Karen, whatever you want to call it. The alligator on his back. So we're going to see our crocodile. <laughs> Why did I say alligator? That's terrible. Whatever. The, the crocodile on his back can sense the dark energies as well. And he knows that these planetary cards are bad news. And that the American Academy principal himself is bad news. So we're going to see if Mr. Fossil Fusion himself can knock out these American Academy invaders and maybe put him at the rank of King of Games at the school because anybody that's an elite duelist is only one step away from King of Games. Axel Brody, an apprentice duelist. Axel received a terrible rating from his bio band and has taken it personally. He believes that Viper is catching on to his snooping. Axel used to attend American Academy and is worried about a girl named Cherry. Axel Brody was once an American Academy student before he transfer, transferred to, I believe, West Academy. Now, he is going to be, a, he's a Dual Academy student going to be defending the Dual Academy name. The thing is, Dual Academy has rated him as one of the worst ratings there is. He's the same rating as Cyrus Truesdale after his, dual, his a performance in the first two tournaments that he performed in on our Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era series. Axel Brody really needs to step it up today. Those volcanic cards need to stop breaking him, and he needs to freaking pull off some combos like he's supposed to. And once he does that, obviously his ranking will rise. Also, his snooping is going to, is starting to get caught on to, so he might be in a little trouble there. We'll see how that goes. Good luck to you, Axel Brody. Keep trying to figure out what's really going on, and uh, let's get on to our next character. Adrian Gecko, an apprentice duelist. Adrian has a personal hatred of Professor Viper. After Viper's bioband rated him super low, he now wants to do whatever it takes to get back at Viper. He even started spying on him. Adrian Gecko is not okay with this bioband thing anymore. He thought he would be rated higher even though he did not perform very well in our tournaments, but apprentice level is just a pure insult to him. He used to be the king of games of his own academy for crying out loud. So we're going to see how Adrian Gecko does today to make up for his ranking and we're going to be watching Adrian as he spies on Viper. Cherry of American Academy! Cherry is said to be the fifth strongest duelist at the American Academy. Her powerful burn strategies impressed Pr uh, Principal McKenzie. His recommendation led her to becoming one of the planetary duelists. Her planetary cars, I believe, card, I believe, is Mars, and it is a brutal burn monster. And not only that, but her whole deck just has to do with some real brutal burn. She even used to take after somebody named Axel Brody, but her own deck went into a different direction. So we're gonna see how Cherry does today with her burn deck. It's gonna be a lot of fun though, as she is gonna be a scary duelist from American Academy. 
Mindy, an elite Obelisk Blue student. Mindy is super excited with her new elite status and wants to celebrate with her girlfriends. The only problem with that is she hasn't found a way to knock Alexis out of her weird cult phase. She just believes Alexis is going through a cult phase and is just like, oh, you've just been brainwashed by this terrible professor. And she is going to do everything she can to stop the brainwashing so that they can just celebrate their rankings. But until that happens, she's going to have to celebrate alone at Elite. And she did earn this status by getting top four in one of the tournaments. Great job, Mindy. Alexis Rhodes, a calm duelist of the White Dorm. Alexis has been tasked to kick out these American Academy duelists. Master Sartorius seems to be uncomfortable with the corrupted energy coming off of them. Alexis has begun to phase in and out of her brainwashing. Alexis Rhodes, after the last couple tournaments, has been getting knocked around. She has won duels here and there, but because she's getting knocked around, she is starting to break out of her brainwashing. Maybe if someone that she cares about or someone that cares about her can defeat her today, she might fully break out of it. But if she loses to an American Academy student or if she loses to someone like Sartorius, then obviously things are just going to get worse. Good luck to you, Alexis Rhodes, and who knows, maybe she'll even win today. As her deck isn't bad, it just, you know, it require it can break because it has so many high tribute monsters. But she has combos to make up for that, so we'll see if she can pull those combos off today. Good luck, Alexis Rhodes, you're a fun character to watch, and uh, I'm sure your friends just want the best for you, so maybe listen to them. Kami of American Academy! Kami was once the strongest duelist at the American Academy. That changed when they changed principles. Her strength did not go unnoticed and she was given a planetary card. There was a time where Kami was the strongest duelist at American Academy. That was before their old principal was moved out and their new principal Mackenzie was moved in. Now she sees herself around top three, I would say, when it comes to the students. But we're going to see how she does today, and we're going to see how she does with her new planetary monster added on to her already powerful water deck. Jasmine, an obelisk blue honored student. Jasmine is a little upset that her rank has gone down from last year. She is still high ranked, but knows that she can do better. Her current goal, though, is to get the new teachers fired by any means. Jasmine hates the new professors. She's cool with Midori Hibiki. She doesn't even know about her because that's Slife of Ren and that's not her business. But she hates the new Raw Yellow. Uh, I mean, not Raw Yellow. She always hated Pro Crowler, but she hates the new um, Obelisk Blue Girls Dorm Professor. She hates the White Dorm Professor. She doesn't like the Black Dorm at all. She just doesn't want any of this new stuff to be happening. So her goal today is to become king of games and try, or king of games of the school and try to uh, change some things about the school so that they can kick out these freaking creepos. Hopefully she creeps uh, gets rid of the creepy professors, but you know that's going to be really hard to do from a student's position. Good luck, Jasmine. You're still a powerful deck. You're just not as strong as you used to be. Aster Phoenix, the White Dorm's elite. Aster Phoenix has been rated as one of the highest ranking duelists at Duel Academy. Aster has dueled some of these American students during his pro days and was told he could be king today. Aster Phoenix, some of you might remember, actually used to take trips to America, and in America he would duel some of their duelists. He dueled their American Academy duelists, he dueled some of their pro level duelists, and it was a lot of fun. So. We're going to see how he does today. Funny enough, back in uh, when we first started our series, Aster Phoenix's winning record was stopped by an American duelist. And anybody that remembers the King's Throne tournament might remember which American duelist stopped him and stopped his growth. Either way, we know Aster Phoenix is 10 times stronger than he was back then. His deck is super powerful and it's even gotten him second place. So we're going to see if he can win it all today and make the White Dorm the best dorm. Good luck to you, everybody. This could be for bad things if Aster wins. Reggie McKenzie of the American Academy. Reggie is the daughter of American Academy's principal. 
She is loyal to her father and has been willing to complete some brutal tasks as at his behest. She is the third strongest duelist at the school. Reggie McKenzie is literally a top three duelist when it comes to the American Academy. She is a heavy, brutal duelist that uses a powerful fairy monster deck that is about running super high level fairies. She also likes to run cards that nerf her opponent's attack and defense stats. So, we're going to see how she does today with her splendid Venus deck. This planetary boss monster is easy to use and has a brutal effect. So, good luck to any Duel Academy students, uh, students, sorry, students, <laughs> students that get in Reggie's way. It's going to be a fun duel. To, I mean, it's going to be a fun day to see how she duels. Sar. Sartorius of the White Dorm, a professor, of course. Sartorius was completely against the American Academy dueling Duel Academy today. The new income flow from the GX tournament gave Chancellor Shepard the confidence to go against Sartorius's wishes. Remember, Duel Academy was only staying afloat thanks to Sartorius's, in, uh, you know. Sartorius's contributions, but now that Duel Academy is starting to do better, Chancellor Shepard doesn't have to, you know, heed all of Sartorius's, uh, all of Sartorius's, uh, demands. But, today was decided by Yami Pegasus, ultimately. And Yami Pegasus does pay Chancellor Shepard's paycheck, so... Good luck to you, Sartorius. I know you need to knock out all these American Academy invaders. They are not somebody you're- they are- these are not people you want to be around, and I know you hate the planetary duelists. Jesse Anderson of the Black Dorm, an honored student. Jesse has been feeling pretty wiped out after dueling all the time. His cards keep telling him to take it easy, but now they are screaming at him to watch out for these American Academy duelists, and they're doing so with a bunch of funny voice acting. <laughs> Jesse Anderson can hear his cards and they are telling him that these American Academy students are no good. They are all dangerous and every single one of them could bring destruction. So, Jesse Anderson needs to do really well today. He did do pretty well in the other tournaments, even summoning two Rainbow Dragons in a single turn, taking down the Obelisk Blue Professor. It was one of the coolest duels we've seen and uh, I'd like to see him do that again. So, good luck to you Jesse and good luck to your Rainbow Dragon deck. Principal McKenzie of American Academy. The principal of American Academy is known for his strict curriculum. He is a friend of Yami Pegasus and was gifted with the new planetary series. A voice in his head told him who deserves the cards. There's a lot to unpack here. But the first thing you should know about Principal McKenzie is that he was given, uh, I mean, he was put in place at American Academy because the American Academy professor before, or principal before him, was too lax. And that was one of the reasons why the students weren't doing so good. And with Principal McKenzie's strict teaching style and strict curriculum, it has made bad professors into good professors like Professor Sartier. And it has made very powerful students. So. We're going to see how those powerful students do today. We're going to see how the principal does today, as he will be here representing American Academy. And we're going to see if he can summon his supremacy son, a really brutal boss monster. I know he's being told to do so, so good luck. Jaden Yuki is missing! Uh-oh. <laughs> Jaden is gone. His friends are worried, but no one knows what happened to him. Jaden has been missing for over a week now. He cannot be found in any of his normal locations. They even checked with Alice, the doll that is living in Duel Academy, in the museum, and Alice did not take him. Jinzo's gone, so they don't have to worry about Jinzo anymore. But Jaden Yuki is missing, and they have no culprits. They don't know what happened. He's just gone. This is very concerning. Everybody, send out your prayers to Jaden's fam- Oh, wait, his family doesn't care. They sent him to Duel Academy. <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's move on to the next character, but this is, uh, this is big. Jaden's gone. 
Chess Princeton of the Black Dorm, a superior duelist. Chaz was really upset with his bioband evaluation. Today, he makes a big decision. If he does not manage to win today's tournament, he will dig up the cards he buried after losing to Zane Truesdale when he first came to the academy. Z Chaz has a big decision to make today. It's either win with the cards given to him by the Black Dorm's professor, or dig up his old cards that he gave up on after losing to Zane. We're going to find out what happens to Chaz by the end of this tournament. If he wins, then he'll be fine. If he loses, then he might be digging some stuff up that might have been better left under the ground. David Rab, an American Academy elite duelist. David is the strongest student at American Academy. He has trained under the principal even before attending American Academy. His planetary card was a gift for his lo loyalty. David is a fan of the pro duelist Bandit Key. David Rab is one of the strongest duelists in all of student history. This guy has not lost a duel at American Academy. His heavy powered machine deck has heavy influence from Bandit Key, and he has been given a lot of support by Principal McKenzie, and his planetary card, not only does it have a brutal attack stat, but if you are dumb enough to destroy it, you basically just Ring of Destruction yourself, which could hurt David, don't get me wrong. It could totally backfire on David, but given the cards he's running, I guarantee you, you will be having less life points than him, and you might cost yourself the duel. David's deck is going to be high powered. He is going to be the number one duelist you need to look out for when it comes to American Academy. But that's not to say that the other American Academy students aren't threats. I would say every single one of the students are threats. And maybe the professors as well and definitely the principal. But that is going to be it. We have mentioned all the characters that will be uh, arriving today at our American Academy versus Duel Academy tournament. Or American Academy tournament, whatever you want to call it. We are going to have a lot of American Academy students going at it. More Dual Academy students, obviously, because American Academy couldn't afford to send over all of their students to have a huge tournament, but that's fine. We got the best of the cream of the crop, the best of the best. And they're taking on most of the best students from Dual Academy, as not only do they have missing students, but they left some students out specifically to make up for the fact that, you know, American Academy doesn't have the numbers, even though they still outnumber them. I'm very excited to get into this tournament today. I hope you're all excited to watch it. There's going to be a lot of fun characters, a lot of fun boss monsters. And go ahead right now, put in the chat or put in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Who is your favorite character arriving in today's tournament? Put it in now, as I'll be speaking you all to, uh, to all of you live very soon. Get ready, guys. Hey there, everybody, and welcome to today's tournament of Duel Academy versus American Academy. We're going to be having a lot of fun today watching these students go at it and these pro uh, professors go at it, and it's going to be a real good time. So I want to thank you all for being here on a Sunday. I know Sunday is not typically my stream day, but it's going to be a typical stream day from now on. So I'm going to need you all to show up in support like you always do. And I appreciate everyone that's here today. So let's get Get ready the first fight of the tournament is going to be Tanaka versus Professor Viper that's right Tanaka and Viper are gonna be going at it and it's gonna be a lot of fun once that clock hits 12 o'clock I'll be ready to start and it turns out a lot of people like Tanaka so it's really funny that he ended up being the first fight yeah yeah that's real cool that's cool that it has a border you finished watching yesterday's tournament perfect then you're here just in time 
Now let's go ahead and let's see uh, who's up first. So these two are ready to fight. Look at that. Their faces are already ready to go. It's like I actually put in some time. Uh, well, actually, what it is is that I had enough time to eat and do everything else. But let's get this tournament started. Fight number one is Tanaka versus Professor Thelonious Viper. We're going to see the Venom deck taking on the Insect deck. Tanaka, I wish you luck with your Insectipede, Metal Armored Bug, and all the fun. Unfortunately! Unfading for two tournaments in a row, giving out all the sub buds. I appreciate it so much. With your support, we're going to be untouchable, and we will be forced to be a Twitch partner. Right, Twitch? We're going to do it. So the first thing you're going to do is do that, because why the hell would you play that in attack mode, Viper? You're a horrible professor, but a brilliant scientist. Um, let's go ahead and see what happens next. That Black Mamba's not going anywhere, that's for sure. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster will clear out any problematic trap cards that Tanaka may have had. Magic Cylinder is one of them. Black Mamba has a very nice effect where it can just go ahead and put you in defense mode. Monster Born gets back the Venom Boa! That is one of his strongest cards, and I know that sounds embarrassing to say out loud, but yes, it is one of his strongest cards. And now with 300 damage, uh, well, that's not going to do much, but whatever. So we're going to go ahead and pop that. That's all well and good. And what else are we going to do? Harpy's Feather would be a good idea. That's all I'm saying. That field spell is really problematic. It'd be a good idea to get rid of it. I'm, I'm just saying, pr please, Tanaka. <laughs> Tanaka, please, the fans, they demand you get rid of it. It's a problem. All right, well, at least he basically destroyed the opponent because I don't see how Professor Viper is going to come back with no hand. Um, I guess Tanaka is going to be fine. He could just tribute summon, so he'll be fine. Um, yeah, he's gonna lose Reson Resonance Insect, but it's 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 good. The professor's got nothing to pack, uh, it, you know, nothing up his sleeve. Oh dear God! Oh God, the duel's over. Oh yeah, no no no, this duel is over. He got his double boss combo, his OG boss monster, the Metal Armored Bug, with his new boss monster, the Doom Dozy. And now that they're together at last, they're going to go in for 5,600 damage. And the first victory goes to Tanaka. Tanaka will take game number one. That was pretty good. <laughs> He's also lucky his opponent runs a deck that doesn't have too many monsters, so there was nothing to stop him, but there. Let's go ahead and get into game number two and see if Tanaka can make short work of this professor that created the annoying bio bands they're all wearing today. That's pretty good. Guy power can make up for your attack point loss in some ways, so that, that should help. Um, yep, I like that. I like that a lot. And this is an old Yu-Gi-Oh, so that field spell won't be destroyed by another field spell. Yeah, that's always fun. And we got ourselves a Venom Swamp. And we got ourselves a Venom Monster. And rush recklessly! Let's get a little old school! And with the old school play, we're gonna get rid of the problematic Venom Monster, and Swords will be played. Damn, Swords is so annoying with Venom Swamp. That is an annoying combo. Oh, no. Oh, dang. No, don't play it in attack mode! Don't you do it, you fool! You have nothing in your hand to use Pinch Hopper with, so there's no value in attack mode. Don't you know? Oh, oh god, no. Oh, we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. All right. Oh, hi, Magic Cylinder. Like, I don't mind if he said it, because then it's not losing any stats. But other than that, it is not a good idea. We're pretty problematic. But he'll be fine. He'll think of something. Oh, god. Uh, what are we going to get? You get a level 4 monster and a level 8 monster. So he gets two. So get yourself a level 8 monster. Please pick... Uh, I was going to say Metal Armored Bug just because Pinch Hopper was going to die. But, you know, you do you. I, I'm sure you have an idea better than mine. Uh, and Sectipede is here with high attack points. Metal Armored Bug is in the grave now, but it, that's not enough. And the Swords is too problematic. So if he uses that Call of the Haunted too early, it's going to really suck. But at least he still gets a level 4 monster there. So this works out. Alright. And there goes a Venom card, which will put more counters down. You're going to lose your Lamia card, but it doesn't matter. You already kind of got what you needed from it. You just need to get a little more Venom support and you'll be good. Whereas Tanaka, he could get Doom Dozy and all that fun stuff. But if he does when the Swords is still up, there's no point. You're actually losing if you do this. Please. The Swords is making you play worse, Tanaka. 
I mean, I guess it's not that bad since it's gone now and you'll still have a decent amount of attack points, but you won't have a great amount. That's the problem. You need a great amount. All right. Well, there goes another monster. Insectipede lasted as long as it could. Verdant Sanctuary will keep him healthy, though. It's good that he at least has Verdant Sanctuary because now he can go super fast and just beat the crap out of this guy. It's time to go in. I agree. Double special summon if possible. Uh, it's not possible. Fine. We're just going to go in with four monsters, and that should be enough. Yep, that, that's an Earth Monster. Gaia Power nerfed it, and the damage is good. And another Cobra. He lost another monster card, which means he's going to be Brick soon. All right, that's pretty good. It looks like Tanaka's in a very nice position. He's one turn away from victory. Viper hasn't pulled off any combos yet, and no back row means no combos are coming. And that monster seems plenty powerful to end this duel. I don't see him losing. Let's just go in with one final attack. The game winning attacks come in. Of course, Venom Cobra is nerfed. That was his third Venom Cobra. And it is over. Tanaka will be moving forward in our tournament. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, no spells and traps were drawn, apparently, that he could actually use. So let's go ahead and let's knock out our uh, faces real quick, and then let's go back to our bracket. The next fight of our American Academy versus Dual Academy tournament will be Aster Phoenix versus. Let me reposition this. Aster Phoenix versus Kami. All right, we're already gonna get an American Academy student. So Kami is a scary one as she does use a water deck, and a lot of people might remember her from my Tag Force tournaments. But her deck is going to be a little different in these tournaments, obviously. Not too different, but a little. Um, and we're going to see if Aster Phoenix, one of the strongest duelists at Duel Academy, he got second place in the Duel Academy Season 2 tournament. Is he going to be enough to stop an American Academy duelist? Uh, we'll find out once I find him. Or her. Can't find either. Found one of them. Thank God. That's one down. All right. Aster Phoenix is definitely not Crystal Beast. You're thinking Jesse Anderson, but nice try. We all make mistakes. Let's go find these characters. And let's go ahead and get into this. So I'm going to uh, go find their faces. Aster Phoenix is ready to duel. Kami is ready to duel. Let's do this. Abyss Soldier is quite a nice monster. Very be beautiful effect on that thing. Doom Lord is annoying. Okay, that's funny that we're going to go with the annoying Doom Lord. Sure, why not? <clears throat> and we got more Star Boys. I don't think she was supposed to draw this many Star Boys to start the duel. <clears throat> but I'm sure she'll be fine. Sorry if my voice is going to be a little weaker than usual. I'm not used to doing double streams, but I'm sure I'll be able to handle it. Stratos, there he is. Dogma, interesting. Stratos should be pretty good. Magic Cylinder will be sto uh, stopping the Stratos' attack. But as of right now, she's in a really bad spot. Obviously, Starboy can help. Unless that Doom Lord does what I think it's about to do. It did not. Interesting. Oh, you did attack. Never mind. You couldn't do it. Uh, yeah, Starboy would be your best option. And it actually is play. Thank God the AI doesn't just go for seven card fish. Lakunga goes in, and the damage is good. Now you're going to need to get rid of that Starboy, Aster Phoenix. You chose Dogma, so I'm going to assume you have better, you know, Destiny Heroes in your hand. Also, you got to deal with the Abyss. Son of a bitch! He waited exactly enough turns! You son of a bitch! You killed everything! Drill Dark Special Summons! We got Celestial and Drill Dark comboing! Obviously, a seven-card fish can fix this, but god damn, that dark hole was perfectly timed. All right, a timed dark hole is not something we always get to see. A United We Stand is a game changer. And with big attack points comes big as... No, I'm not going to finish that sentence. We're just going to enjoy this. All right. I would have never set the dark hole myself, but the patience was nice. He's one monster away from Dogma. He's super unlucky. He needed one more special summon. Just like he got earlier. No, play your Starboy. What are you doing? Gotta play your motherfucking Starboy. Oh, not on the main phase two. What are you? That's even worse. That's even worse to play it after the fact. All right. Well, Pot of Greed gets Fusion Gate. Are you serious? No. Oh, wait. Plasma Search? Oh, my God. He did. He got the Plasma Search. We're going to see the boss monster. It's Destiny and Dragoon. 
Dragoon is here for the Goon Squad. It's all gone. But Dragoon will come back. We already know this. Dragoon is a god card. All right. You get one turn to attack. It's a little late for Mercury to come in. It would have been nice earlier. Proto Armor should have done as much damage as it could have before the end of the duel because Destiny and Dragoon is definitely going to end this duel. That monster is insane. Monster Born stealing the... Oh, no. You're going to go Stratos. Interesting. What are we going to actually look for, though? We can go Stratos, but we look for like a Drill Dark or a... Still Plasma. I like Plasma. I'm not going to be wrong. I'm not going to say it's bad. You had another fusion? You just had two Dogmas. Okay. Sure, and Diamond Dew. And Celestial gets activated. And we draw two cards and Diamond Dew gets activated. It doesn't matter. When there's not going to be another turn. Aster Phoenix. There's not going to be another turn. This duel started in Kami's favor, but the second Aster Phoenix pulled that fusion gate, he completely changed the whole duel. A really good back and forth duel, but Aster Phoenix takes game one. All right, let's go ahead and get into game two. If Kami can work a little faster, she might be able to stop uh, Aster from doing any of that stuff. But uh, yeah, his boss monster is definitely scary. She has an okay hand. There's stuff to do with that. I just don't know if I would use that. All right. We're going to get rid of Starboy. That's fine. Abyss Soldier's interesting. I don't know if I would have... Oh, I guess you got it back, so who cares? Yeah. We'll see what she does with Abyss Soldier. Destiny Hero. Yeah, Destiny Draw throws away Celestial, puts a card down. Two back row is really safe. You got to love that. All right, Mother Grizzly's really good. I would summon that. You're going to Monster Born your opponent Celestial. Interesting. Why is my question. Abyss Soldier's going to toss Mother Grizzly. Are we going to special summon? No, we're going to summon the Tripper Mercury. The boss is here. Tripper Mercury is on the field. The first planetary summon of the day. And I don't know what it does. So, And it's probably effect is probably too long to read. Oh, it attacks twice. This monster can attack twice. Holy crap. All right, the Tripper Mercury just tripped into battle and has done 2,000 damage to both players. Starboy's going to make it a problem. Oh, no. That's a pro Oh, shit! The Destiny Hero Defender! It's a level 8 that it can attack twice like a Cyber Twin Dragon. Aqua Spirit's going to force the monster into attack mode, but D-Tactics will do something as well, I'm sure. D-Tactics buffs the monster. Drill Dark. Wait, are we going to see a tribute? Diamond Dude. Fusion Gate doesn't work. He doesn't have Dogma or Plasma. He needed one of them. No Dogma, no Plasma. Darn it. All right, the Tripper Mercury is going to do a lot of work right now. Let's see it go. First, we're going to have Aqua Spirit go in. The Tripper Mercury is destroying Drill Dark. The Triple Mercury destroys Diamond Dude, which means he has no tributes. And with no tributes, he has no chance. It's not even a powerful card with attack or defense. It's just a solid effect, being able to attack twice. I mean, that's just kind of crazy if you ask me. Hi, Stratos. A little too late for you. If you were there last turn, you would have won him the duel. If you were only there last turn. All right, Kami. You already... No, you need one more monster to have game. Pretty much any level 4 or lower monster. That'll do. Abyss Soldier's plenty. All right. We're going to have Tripper Mercury go in. Tripper Mercury goes in again. He's got scapegoats. Get rid of the goats as soon as you can. He's still standing. This is the power of Amer uh, of um, Duel Academy's second strongest duelist. If we don't count Blair since she's missing. All right. Duel Academy's second strongest duelist is putting up a fight because he summoned a Destiny Hero. You know it's coming. It's the Dogma and TT, baby. TT gets rid of everything. We're playing with nothing now. Unless D-Tactics does something that I don't know about. All right. Heart of the cards. Whoever draws better monsters wins. That, you know why I didn't think about that? That card's pretty good too. We're into a top deck game. These two are really evenly matched. They've given us good duels all day. Destiny or Fearmonger is not worth it. I would save that magic cylinder for a big boy. All right, you need something that can beat Fearmonger, but also be careful when you do beat that Fearmonger. Eh, uh, shit. Okay, Fearmonger is slowly doing work. He's not summoning anything else. 
Starboy. You know what? It's enough. It's a joke, but it's enough. Starboy with 50 extra attack, 800 extra on top of that, and the duel's getting close. He's in critical condition below Duelist Kingdom level. When you're below Duelist Kingdom level, you know you're in trouble. Fearmonger can bring back the Mighty Celestia. He is not that strong, actually. Destiny draw is really good. You need something different. I like Diamond Dew, but you need something different. Monster Reborn! Drill Dark is here, but do you have a normal summon into a Plasma Slash anything else? Drill Dark special summons. Yes, he does! It's Plasma, baby! Plasma absorbs the almighty star. It vanishes. Okay, 19 for game, but the wrong way! Aster Phoenix loses because Kami was patient. Kami's patience paid off just like his paid off in game number one with Dark Hole. That was incredible. All right, we're going to go ahead and move into game number three. Both duelists are giving us great duels today. Either character can win it all. Will the second strongest Duel Academy duelist do it, or will one of the strong American Academy stu students do it? Welcome, and thank you so much for subbing, Caesar. Always good to see you, buddy. Oh, Tripper Mercury on the first turn. Why not? The Tripper Mercury is here, and it's got a friend. You have no resource management, and it's going to cost you this duel if he has one heavy storm. But we'll see what happens. We have Destiny Hero. Yep, there it goes. We get two extra cards. With that, we're going to go ahead and get a Stratos. Stratos gets a Dogma. Do we have a combo? Uh, no, but there is two back row, and two back row is too much for my liking. Pot of Greed could be very helpful. You need a Harpy's Feather Duster. Nope. Seven colored fish. Interesting putting that... Oh, you hit a trap. I'm not used to the AI doing that. They hit a trap card. The Tripper Mercury goes in. Was that the trap that could have stopped Mercury? Oh my god. Is Kami going to win this? How did she know? Destiny draw. Okay, we're going to throw away Destiny here. There's lots of heroes in your hand. You might as well put them to use. Uh, Stratos is here. Yeah, Stratos will be using its effect. Stratos' effect gets Drill Dark and combo into Dogma. We know it. Drill Dark gets special summon. We get a special summon. We get a Dogma, baby. It's all gone, but who cares? You have a hand. She doesn't. As long as you have the hand, you have control. She has to top deck her way, but she can't do it. Even with 1,400 life points, he could still win this duel. Call of the Haunted is pretty big. It's going to get back Stratos. More search power. Get another Dogma, maybe. Drill Dark is a smart choice if you already have a Dogma. Drill Dark is coming in. Drill Dark summons Fearmonger. This is technically more damage than a Dogma, but I would still special summon it on the second or on main phase two. And they agree with me. And Dogma is here. You lost all of your life points. Celestial gets activated. You draw two cards. Holy crap. Yeah, win this now, Kami. You're a pretty good deal. No, you still lose. You still lose. That was pretty good, but you still lose. Kami went super ham super quickly and almost won the duel, but it is over. All right. Very nice. Stratos is going to get Plasma. So, the second strongest uh, uh, Duel Academy student does barely defeat one of the American Academy students in a great round one duel. That was so much fun. So, even if American Academy loses or they lose some members today, remember Kami. Because she had to fight the second strongest Duel Academy student and still almost won. So, let's go ahead and get back to our bracket and let's see what uh, is up next. Our next duelists are Tyranno Hasselberry versus Velian Crowler. Tyranno Hasselberry versus Velian Crowler. Now, let's see what happens. Uh, TT Rano and Velian Crowler. Where's the V boy? He's here somewhere. All right, Ancient Gears versus Dinosaurs. All right, everyone plays to bets. The Ancient Gears versus Dinosaurs. We're gonna have a lot of fun with these two. Looks like Tyranno is ready to duel. Looks like Crowler is ready to duel. Tyranno's got early Gillosaurus, which is always good. You know, Jurassic World's a solid card for his deck. It's good to search that out. Um, and then I would set a giant round. I like it. Okay, good start from uh, good old Tyranno. Good start. 
Ancient Gear Knight is here. Ancient Gear Knight is going to get stopped because it's one of the few Ancient Gears that needs to be summoned again in order to get the cool Ancient Gear common effect that they all share. Can dinos eat machines? We're about to find out. Uh, this is no dino. They got no dinos is the problem. But that Ancient Gear Castle can become something extremely scary, so be careful. Or, yeah, no, it's going to be. Oh, threw away a poly. Interesting. You could have... You could have fused. I'm sure you have your own reasoning, but you could have fused, but it's okay. We know that next turn an Ancient Gear Golem is on the way. Hyper Hammerhead could definitely deal with a fusion monster, so I guess it's good that you didn't fuse. Still. Yeah, the AI was not programmed to use Dyna Tanks, so that was a real shame. Alright, Destroyosaurus is here. Destroyosaurus is going to get some backup from Gillosaurus. And giant rats. I don't think I like this idea now that I see what they're actually planning. All right, well, this is the plan that we're going with. Hyper Hammerhead Sacrifice just to do some good damage. Granted, Crowler's life points are pretty low, but I think we all believe that an Ancient Gear Golem is on the way, and that Ancient Gear Golem is going to be horrifying. So, up oh, Gear Town, that's always fun. Ancient Gear Castle gets used for the Ancient Gear Golem! One of the best classic monsters you'll ever find from GX. If it wasn't for the cannot be special summoned effect, it would have been one of the greatest cards ever made in the when it was released. Dark Hole is nice, but at the same time, you cleared out Giant Rat, which is a heavy cost. Still, you did what you thought you could do. Um, Tyranno Hasbury puts himself in a bad spot, though Crowler does have low life points. So even a Magic Stone... Oh, he already did, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. A strong Dino would do it, though. A Saber Source or something like that, something to give him advantage. That is not for this. This is better after... You, you kind of threw everything away, buddy. Yeah. Oh, look, a rat. You both like rats. Yeah. Draw one of your heavy-powered dinos or die. That is your two options. No, not... I should have specified not tributes. Not tributes. Or die. Well, hello, tribute monster. Hello, Gadgetron Dragon. I just... I shouldn't have said, I should have specified level 4. I said Sabersaurus, though. You heard me. You heard me say it. All right. Well, first duel goes to Velian Crowler, a very powerful Ancient Gear duelist. We're going to go into game number two, and we're going to see if Tyranno can turn the duel around, as his problem in that duel, surprisingly, was having low attack points. That trap will definitely help with that specific problem. Destroyosaurus is here. We have Fusion Sage. Interesting to get that so early, but maybe they actually have the combo in their opening hand. Pot agreed. They're trying to find the combo, that's for sure. Ancient Gear Castle's really good. You gotta love it. That is gonna help you get the combo. Extra oh, no, okay. You know what? I'm fine with that just because maybe it'd be too busted if he was getting it. Oh my fucking god. Hi! Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem! The strongest card in Crowler's deck with a massive 4700 and no spells, no traps, no nothing is getting activated. Yeah, we're gonna see a Harpy's Feather Duster. No, it doesn't matter. None of this matters. Oh, that would have been a good card, too, earlier. That thing does piercing. You're gonna die. Okay, you at least understand it does piercing. Thank God. Not a lot of AIs do. Another... Oh, my God. He just refueled his castle. That guy's at 4,700 attack. If he draws a limiter removal, he'll just end this duel. He's gonna end it either way. This is so embarrassing. Tyranno is getting outmatched in terms of power. Not something we thought we'd see. Hydro Ganon's a good monster with Jurassic World, but who cares? Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem is on the field. This level 10 behemoth is unstoppable. And Gear Town's just to be insulting. Here comes the game-winning attack. There goes the damage. And that is it. Tyranno gets completely wrecked by the Professor of the Raw Yellow Doors. All right. So let's go ahead and let's move these characters forward. Let's see who's up next as well, because Tyranno didn't do it. The next duelist is Cyrus Truesdale versus Jesse Anderson. Crystal Beasts versus Roids. Who do you guys like more for this duel, Roids or Crystal Beasts? The dinos could not eat machines. You were ac That is accurate. They couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Rainbow Dragon versus Barbaroid. 
Someone says, Jason, get out of here. You don't get to choose because you know you're wrong. Roids are terrible. <laughs> Roids are like actually terrible. You couldn't make a good Cyrus style Roid deck. Couldn't give me a million dollars to help him. Wouldn't be doable. I'd have to take out most of his Roids to make him good. Alright, but Jesse, on the other hand, his deck is reliant on having those uh, field spell in the back row. So we're going to start with Submarine Roid, and Cyrus is going for an interesting strategy where he's just like, you know what, I'll just win around you. I can't. I don't think I can beat you in terms of power, so I'm just going to go around you. Plus, if I destroy your monsters, you might actually become a problem. Oh, hi. Th oh, they're both going around, but if they race, the winner will be Cyrus. This is a race that Cyrus would win. Power Bond is fun, but there's no fusions I don't believe. No entry is interesting unless you're truck roiding. Why the hell didn't you just summon truck roid and eat the mon- Oh, it has to hit the grave, huh? Yeah, I probably couldn't eat the monster. Still, you should have summoned something. Alright, whatever. You just want to set that, that's fine. Uh, Crystal Beacon is going to get out of- Carbuncle gets a special summon. The field is covered. And because you used your no entry like that, you have nothing. And your opponent is one card away from Rainbow Dragon. All they need is, uh, which one is it? That's six of them, so what's the seven? Uh, let me think. I don't know. Can't think of it at the moment. Amber Mammoth? Might be. Oh, no, it's. Is that. Yeah, it might be Amber Mammoth. Yeah, it's the Amber Mammoth. Power Bond! Here comes the unstoppable Gyrosity! No, its name is uh, Parasycroid. <laughs> and Parasycroid with 3200 attack is going in and does 3200 direct. Truckroid wants to devour but cannot and is going to be left there. Cyrus's life points take a hit, but who the hell cares? Cyrus is in a position to win this duel. Parasycroid can easily win the duel for him. The Parasycroid is unstoppable. Jesse's trying to win, though. He's trying to use the, uh, the kitty cat to put him down, but it's not going to be enough. And if Cyrus keeps attacking around him, it's going to be game. Cyrus just don't misplay by putting stuff in attack mode. Cyrus has this one turn away. Cyrus can take down Jesse Anderson. That super lucky top deck might be the end of this duel. Jesse has nothing. When it comes to direct damage, the winner will easily be Cyrus. Cyrus has this game. Turns out Baldman's was right. Holy crap. How do you know? What the hell? All right. Yeah, you could do that, but you just attack and win. You don't want to make a mistake now. All right, game-winning attack goes through, and that is it. Cyrus takes game number one. Yep, can't summon Rainbow Dragon because his opponent wasn't destroying any of his monsters, which means he had nowhere to summon it. So let's go ahead and let's uh, get into game number two. Will Cyrus do it again, or will Jesse get his revenge? It all depends on if Cyrus gets another direct attacking strategy off, because that actually works. Every other strategy seems to fail, but that one, that one works. All right, let's see what we got here. We got, oh, that's one of his best cards. He can get Sapphire Pegasus. That's beautiful. All right, and he gets a card down there, and Pegasus gets him another card. Okay, that's good. Rare value, I would get rid of that. Yep, yeah, makes sense. And we got a trap. So now let's see what Cyrus can do. Steamroid is here. Steamroid's going in, and damage is okay, I guess. And we have a set. Very nice. Excuse me. I ate before the stream, so I, uh, okay. Oh, he got another one. What the hell? This man's luck is on top of the world right now. He's got basically every P uh, crystal beast he needs. Magic Cylinder's a little problematic because it saves Steamroid, and Steamroid will become a problem. But uh, what is he going to do with it? That is the real question. Steamroid times two or Card Trooper? I would Card Trooper, but he can do whatever he wants. He's Cyrus. Yeah, don't forget, Cyrus never knows how to play his spell. Oh, no, sorry. He doesn't know how to use his spells. He can play the spells. He doesn't know how to use them. That's, was that the whole lesson Zane was trying to teach? I don't remember. And Amber Mammoth returns. Hi there, Amber Mammoth. All right. Steamroids are still going to be a problem. I still, I also recommend just going Card Trooper. It's enough damage. Oh, my. Do you have game? This is game. Guys, this is game. Card Trooper is going to create it. Unless he's been saving a trap card for the last moment, he literally loses the duel. What do you want? Jesse, Jesse sucks. 
<laughs> Jesse sucks. He got completely wrecked by the apprentice duelist Cyrus Truesdale. Cyrus, now that you've lost Jaden and all your other friends, Chumley's gone. It turns out you're becoming a better duelist. I'm proud of you. All right, Cyrus 2 0s his opponent in easily. There we go. There we go. That's why you don't mess with transportation. <laughs> I guess his whole deck is transportation, isn't it? All right, the next duel is... Yeah, it's Cherry. All right, American Duelist Cherry versus Jim Crocodile Cook, who I think we all can say, because Blair is gone, is the strongest duelist at Duel Academy. The number one student taking on an American Academy duelist named Cherry. We're going to see who's stronger. We already saw Kami put up a hell of a fight. Who the hell knows what Cherry can do? And that Tripper Mercury card was really good. You have to give it to her. That Tripper Mercury was really good. So maybe Cherry's card will be good too. But Jimmy is the strongest duelist at the school. So we got to we gotta believe in him. All right. There we go. Two cards that can destroy special summons is really nice. Abaki goes in for a very basic attack. And there's nothing wrong with that. He loves that card for some reason. All right. Abaki has done its job. Ooh, Miracle Rupture is good. All right, Miracle Rupture shall get Gaia Plate, the Force of Earth, a possibility of being summoned. There's two of them, but you don't even need it. You just need one. Gaia Plate is here. Fossil Dyna is here. No special summons allowed. The burn will happen, but it's not going to be much. And 1,200. Now, Mar, how are you going to win if you can't special summon? What the hell can your deck even do? Now, Gaia Plate will die if you don't kill Fossil Dyna, but you're AI and you will kill Fossil Dyna, which means you both can special summon again, so good news there. Problem, you didn't play any new traps, and that last trap didn't do anything, so what's your real plan here? I, I actually don't know what you're planning. It doesn't seem to make sense, though. All right, Gaia Plate does amazing damage, and you are one turn away from death. So, with 500 life points ne left, Cherry has to decide how she wants this duel to end. How will you do it? <laughs> I'll give it to you. You're interesting. UFO Turtle is uh, doing its job. She's trying her absolute best right now, but uh, Jim is the strongest duelist, as I've said before. Solar Flare is pretty okay. We're going to throw away a Time Stream and a Fusion Monster. We're going to get rid of the monster we just destroyed. And Solar Flare can... Oh, Inferno, Inferno. And you... Wait! You were holding back double Inferno? I mean, you still lose. Don't get me wrong. Because one attack is going to end this and you've never used that one trap card. And you got your backfire ten times too late, as if it mattered. No solar lock possibility, so no chance. This card's going to throw some stuff away again. Yeah, more fusions going away. That card's like, hey, I have an idea. Give you a fossil... F oh, a time stream. Damn, fossil fusion would have been better. Uh, here comes another effect, and we're going to use it for 500 burn, and that is the end of the duel. You lost to burn, Cherry. How does that feel? <laughs> All right, we're going to be going into game number two. Jim still showing off why he is the strongest. Didn't sing, didn't use a single fusion, by the way. He just won that duel. He didn't need a fusion. He just threw a rock at her, basically, yeah. So we're going to go into game number two, and we're going to see if Cherry can make up for that uh, pitiful performance in game one. I do feel bad for her if she was matched up against the strongest duelist, but still, you have to do it. That's a really good start. That is a really good start from Jimmy. Jimmy's got Rock Bombardment. Gaia Plate is on the way next turn. 500 Burn is nice. We have Fencing Fire Fair, which is a good card in itself, but you're going to need some back row to make it better. All right, we're going to throw away some more stuff, and I bet you things are going to get very scary very soon. All right, Gaia Plate's on the way. We all know this, but Fencing Fire Fair is an annoying card, so I'm sure that'll help. We're going to get Time Stream again, most likely. Yes, we are. Time Stream had a normal effect back in the uh, Attack Force game, but now in this game it's just busted. You do not have to pay half your life points to evolve. Gaia Play goes in, willing to sacrifice itself in order to kill the Ferret. The Ferret will destroy it, though. 500 burn, but that's a lot of damage to Cherry, and her back row still fails her. 500 burn. Oh, Ceasefire. Kind of interesting. Ceasefire just for 1,000 burn. 
I would have waited for more, but I guess your opponent does tribute a lot, so makes sense. You're going to need some pretty crazy cards, Cherry. What else are you packing? More ferrets. Wow, you just happened to draw two ferrets this duel. I mean, that's not going to save you, but, you know, it's it's nice. Inferno. You love Inferno. You just don't like using it. All right. Inferno is on the field. Premature Burial can be extremely good right now. It will bring back the Gaia Plate, and your life points are at risk. Your life points are dead. <laughs> You're just dead. You have no chance in this duel. You have to destroy Giant Rat to survive. Literally no chance. You must Dark Hole, and you are still going to die. 400 life points remain for Cherry. What will Cherry do with her 400 life points? Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> that is about right. I think we're about to see the end of this duel. Backfire, you're way too late to the party. Get her out of here. Completely wreck her. All right, game-winning attacks coming through. UFO Turtle cannot save your life points. That is for damn sure. Backfire doesn't save nothing. Jim, the strongest duelist of Duel Academy, easily takes care of the American Academy student. Good job, Jimmy. All right, Jim Crocodile Cook has done it for his fans. Let's go ahead and let's get into our next duels. I feel bad for American Academy. They've already lost two powerful duelists. I know Cherry didn't get to show off, but maybe if she had a different opponent, she could have. But randomizers are a bastard. So let's go ahead and let's uh, move Jimmy forward. The next duel is Alexis Rhodes versus Axel Brody. All right, Alexis Rhodes is known for her ice deck. Axel Brody is known for his burn deck. What do you guys prefer? The frost or the burn? Uh, let's see. Axel is ready to duel. And Alexis is ready to duel. Let's get into it. Alexis is good to go. Axel Brody. Oh, I put her on the wrong side. Axel Brody is good to go. Alexis, get on the other side. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We have ourselves a set and a set. He has a much better hand. I can already guarantee you that. He all. You fucker, you're joking. On your opening hand? On your opening hand, you got Doomfire? Oh, uh, well, wait. That was really good. Because now you could Doomfire. Holy crap, this guy on his opening hand got his boss monster that normally takes so much time. Now he's just stacked against her. What is Alexis going to do against a 3k beater? Yeah, that's about right. That is, that is about right. Opening with stone. So you had TT and Dark Hole in your opening hand. You are, you are a mean person, Alexis. I know your friends don't tell you this enough, but you are a mean person to start with your two limited cards. Well, some people don't have TT limited like Mako Tsunami. Saku is gone. That's a good hit, actually. All right. She doesn't seem to have any other monsters. Her deck is known for bricking for having so many level eights in, her, in there and higher. Although Axel is known for bricking because of these volcanic shells. He needs Blaze Accelerator to get true value out of them. All right. What are you going to do, Alexis? You need more monsters. Call the Haunted can help. That definitely helps. That is an interesting one. And now we have Snowman Creator. So here comes some heavy damage. And yeah, 800 back to yourself, but 3,000 to your face. And just like that, Axel Brody is at the end of his rope. Sorry, Axel. Turns out Alexis is better. Ooh, UFO Turtle's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Very smart choice there to get rid of your card. Snow Dragon is going to be able to target whatever newly summoned monster you summon. So let's see what you choose. I would choose UFO Turtle. You did not choose UFO Turtle. I would have chosen UFO Turtle for survival's sake. I understand you want to do burn. But you need to understand that they don't care. More snowmen are here. And the snowman is going to end this duel. Almost. They, they have like a 300 life points left or something. Yep. So, Axel, you have one turn to knock this up. Draw Volcanic Slicer or die. Or Rock... I forgot about Rocket. That's a very good top deck. Volcanic Rocket gets a Blaze Accelerator. Blaze Accelerator gets Volcanic Shot to work, but he's not going to use it. But it can be used to destroy that stupid uh, ice monster that's immune to level 4s. Axel Brody re-controls the duel, but there's two tributes. And we know she was holding one back. Say hello to her Snow Dust Dragon. 
and Snow Dust Dragon is going to take them out. Axel Brody loses game number one. Sorry, buddy. Axel tried, but you can't let her have two monsters left over. We're going to go into game number two and see if he can get a little closer. It was decent. It was a decent duel for him. Especially since he did terrible in the last two tournaments. That is a great hand. Holy crap, he can get anything. And he can start the duel with 1500 burn. He has an amazing hand. All right. Two back row, though. You got to watch out. Last time she got super lucky against you. Harpy's Feather Duster can deal with some of that back row. Let's see what we got. Uh, Magic and Saku are gone. And Blaze Accelerator is a coming. Blaze Accelerator could be used with Scattershot, but we're just going to go for battle. I disagree with this play because Mother Grizzly just gives her more stuff, thins out her deck, and that's an interesting choice. I understand why she chose it because it does have enough defense points, but you could see the Blaze Accelerator as well as I do, I assume. And that's an early Dark Hole. This is going to be the one time where I say... Well, no, it isn't. This is the one. This is the more uh, common Dark Hole that we see. It's not the kind you want to see. It's a bad one. All right, Tri-Blaze Accelerator is right there. Tri-Blaze is going to definitely put a dent in her uh, his opponent. He drew it. I knew it. I freaking knew it. This guy's a cheater. He actually drew Doomfire again and gets another Blaze Accelerator and can play it but won't probably use it and just goes in for an insane amount of damage. I can't believe he did it again. Yeah, you can put some ice counters, snow counters down. It do not matter when your life points are basically zero. Good luck, Alexis Rhodes. You already used Dark Hole, you crazy person. So this is your last cha turn. Do something. You coward. <laughs> oh, you absolute coward. Soul Fire with Soul Fire can end the duel. You actually summon that card? Wow. I don't think I've ever seen that. All right, Snow Dragon puts a lot of counters down as if it matters. Here comes the game-winning attack, and it is good. Axel Brody brutalizes his opponent. Alexis Rhodes is uh, in a bad spot now. We're going into game three. Let's go into game three, and let's see who's going to win it all. Will it be Axel Brody's insanely uh, powerful burn deck when he keeps drawing freaking Doomfire at the perfect moments? Or will it be Alexis's Rhodes Ice deck? Blizzard deck, whatever you want to call it. Another Volcanic Rocket start. Very lucky starts for this man. Blaze Accelerator is a, a necessary card for his deck. Okay, okay. Streams bought, brought to us by Little Caesar's Pizza. Hey, budget pizza is good. And Cold Enchanter uses its effect to give itself more enchantment to be stronger than the opponent. The rocket shall fall. No back row, though, so the Cold Enchanter being a nice card might find a opponent too strong for you quite soon. Pot of Greed's going to come through. And Call the Haunted into Volcanic Hammer was the play I saw in the future. Tri-Blaze Accelerator is on the way. Destroying the opponent's monster ended up being the worst thing that can happen. And Tri-Blaze Accelerator is here. And Volcanic Hammer is here as well. Goodbye, Cold Enchanter. You should have buffed it one more time, even though it would have just been popped by uh, any of the Tri-Blaze cards. Good luck, Alexis. They have everything they need. If they draw Doomfire, yeah, Swords is nice. But if they draw Doomfire, the duel is over. And they could just burn you every single turn. They do not care about your card. They could summon Slicer. They could summon Solar Flare. They could use Hammer's Effect. There is no... Nothing. Okay, why didn't you throw away... Okay, wait, why do I care? Um, you didn't play Slicer that does burn. Slicer legitimately does burn, and you just didn't play him. Oh, because you knew a Dark Hole was coming. How does she get it every duel? How the hell did she do that? Snowman Creator is here and will create 1,600 damage, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm calling shenanigans. He saw that. He saw that in the future. Don't you, Dark Hole? It's not worth it. You have you have Tri-Blaze! You have Tri-Blaze! You don't have to Dark Hole! Oh my god. You just wasted a very good spell card that you only have one of. All right. That is adorable to summon the Snow Dust Dragon as if it's going to do something other than just die. Oh, Volcanic Shell is going to be used for sure. Yep, Volcanic Shell is used so he could search out his deck. It'll cost him a few life points, but I highly doubt he cares. This way he thins out his deck perfectly. Volcanic Slicer does another 500. And even with Swords, she didn't... Honestly, she's still in a bad position. Swords did not help her that much. Harpies is going to help her a lot. Getting rid of that freaking Triblaze is vital. But if she can't beat the last monster, it doesn't matter. He would be bricked if she could just beat that monster. 
Volcanic Shell does its job again. Volcanic Shell is here. And 1,800 damage goes through. If she is able to destroy that monster, she will win the duel. Because he is bricked beyond hell. But she is... Oh, it, it, they're both bricked. But the difference is he has one monster left. And now he's got a UFO turtle. And now you're going to suffer. Next turn, he could probably win with just Soul of Fire. Yep. Next turn, he can activate his spell card and just win the duel. She loses unless she does 5,100 damage in one turn. Yeah, I don't think your set monster is going to do 5,100 damage in one turn. So you might as well just activate that spell card. Soul of Fire. Goodbye, Doomfire. That's the third duel where I got to see a Doomfire. And that is it, everybody. The winner is Axel Brody. Axel Brody shows you just how good he can be. Alexis Rhodes, you have disappointed. As usual. So, Axel, go ahead and move forward. The next duel will be Adrian Gecko versus Mindy. So, Adrian Gecko will now be taking on Mindy. Let me go ahead and set this up. Let me go find uh, good old Mindy. And let's go ahead and do it. You're right. Adrian Gecko is the cloudy in person. Unless you're implying that he's going to win, because if that's what you're implying, then you're a crazy person. We're going to go look for Mindy, and then we're going to start. And it looks like we're good to go. Let's watch these two go at it. We're going to get Fencing Fire Ferret, and that's good. If he top decks his boss monster, that's good, but her Fire Ferret is built for things like his boss monster, so... You know, it'll be a problem. We're just going to have some sets. Part of the cards. That's None of these cards are that scary. I'm just going to get a couple counters down, and then we're going to throw them away to get rid of Fire Fair, which will kill you in return. So it's a death for a death, but you're the one that takes burn. Still good good job to get rid of that, that Fire Fairy. There was, it, it was important. Mindy, what else you got? Mindy's got the rat. Everyone, you kind of love the rat, guys. Classic card that every single character should have, including me. If I had a starter deck, the rat would be in it. You could tribute for Nimbus Min, but the problem is you don't really have any counters on the field, so it will beat the rat. Oh, Acid Trap Hole with Spikes. I mean, Trap Hole with Spikes. That's a classic. That is a Joey Wheeler card, and you got to love it. Anyone that uses Joey Wheeler card is on my top 10 list. All right, Call of the Haunted comes through, and we got Fencing Fire Ferret. That's 3,100 brutal. Wow, she's winning with battle. You are so weak that Mi she didn't even set that. Random Gamer, thanks for the subs. Random All of you gamer, people enjoy not having to watch ads. Holy crap. You actually did that. Didn't even set it. You are embarrassing. A thousand. The Burden of the Mighty is going to help. Definitely. But like, a he needs Cloudy and Squall. If he doesn't get Cloudy and Squall, he's just going to die. He, need he needs it. Oh my gosh, this is just great. Again, thank you so much, Random Gamer. Thank you so much, Unfading. You're all very beautiful people, and I appreciate you. No Cloud Balls? Oh, he has Cloud Balls. See, it's right there. He just didn't activate it when he, because he didn't want to. Fencing Fire Ferret kills Turbulence. Goodbye. 500 damage comes through. Natural Disaster is good for Burn, but Mindy hasn't even taken a lick of damage. Morphing Jar could save him or end this duel right now. He got his bosses, but all of his back row has been destroyed. Every single card just completely gone. Dark freaking room of nightmare. She burns herself. She just deserves because she knows she's about to win this duel. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Loco Mexicano. 619. All right, here comes some more burn damage. Here comes Sylphie in attack mode because she doesn't care. You're an embarrassment. Get him out of here. You lost by battle, basically. All right, that was awesome. Good job, Mindy. Good freaking job to Mindy. I'm proud of her. She uh, she really put in the work there. But we're going to the game number two. Adrian Gecko, try better. And those cloud balls did not help him at all. <laughs> they, they did not help at all. Let's see if his hand gets a little better this time. He does have his boss this time, but he needs cards to summon it. He got Cloudy and Squall this time, so he got the cards he didn't have last time. Very good that he has those. The only problem is he didn't get any of his invincible monsters, which is any monster but that one. 
or the like cloud car. You lost it so early, her one harpies. She opened with her one harpies. Dude, it sucks to be you. Holy crap, does it suck to be you. That card's all right, but you can't use it just yet. I, I don't know, man. Still feed for a thousand burn. She can just do this all day. Nimble Momonga is just adorable. My friend Arturo thought that thing was an insect. Somehow he could not see the, the flying squirrel aspects of it. I find that funny, Arturo. We all do. All right, still feed for a thousand. She's just going to keep doing it. Your cards aren't strong enough. You do get two tokens, which is game changing because the, she can't get rid of all of them. She can only get rid of one. But she has three back rows, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be confident. <laughs> Unless you draw Harpy's Feather Duster right now, there's no point. Here comes the boss. The eye of the tie, it's gone. Like I said, I have no confidence in it. But this card could still do something. It's got one counter on it. I don't know what it does. Oh, it's gone. I would have done that to the Typhoon if I'm being honest. I wouldn't have done the other effect, but whatever. Eye of the TT, that's about right. We got ourselves a giant rat, and we're going in for 1,400 damage. 1,400 damage is real good. We got ourselves a sheep cloud. Funny enough, I actually went to Arturo's house yesterday, guys. We had a lot of fun. We were playing, uh, I don't remember the name of the game, but it's a board game. We played a board game. Jason, what was the name of the game? I forgot. Jason was also there. Boldman's was there, too. We were playing, uh, holy crap, I don't know what it's called. I don't even know the game. what the game's called. It was just fun. Four Souls. We played Four Souls, the board game. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and pop five. You've done this before. You pop the ferret, it pops you, and you take the burn. And now you like, it was still good to get rid of the ferret, but you're, you're in trouble. Don't you get it? You're going to die. And Mindy winning by battle with her insect Momonga and 1,400 damage. Natural Disaster with one Cloudy and Smoke Ball. Adorable. Mindy, you could summon anything or just use a burn card and win this duel. Yeah, I'm not even mad. Normally I'd be mad. I hate when they do that, but I'm not even mad. Go for it. And that is it, everybody. The winner will be Mindy. Adrian Gecko is an embarrassment. All right. Oh, and it crashed. Yep, Adrian's terrible plays have crashed my uh, Master Duel client. So we're going to have to bring it back up in like two seconds, thankfully. I'm glad they can load super quickly. Imagine if it was like an old school PS2 or something. Like it would take, I have to go through the, the menu screen. I have to, you know, there'd be a lot of work there. So let's go ahead and go back to our bracket and let's see who's up next. The next fight is Jasmine versus Chaz Princeton. These are some pretty heavy hitters. Chaz Princeton does pretty good in the tournaments and Jasmine has gotten as far as top two in a tournament. Though that was before everybody's upgrades because her upgrades are a lot more slight than them. All right, but we'll see how she does today. I, I love it. Let's go Chaz. Chaz it up, folks. Chaz it up. Um, speaking of Chaz, where is he? There he is. All right, let's do this. Time for those armed dragons to do some work. Freaking love armed dragons. And Chaz is going up against Chaz. All right, looks like they're good to, uh, good to go. I appreciate that, Tribal Guy. Don't worry, he won't let you down, even though it looks like she has a very good opening hand. Like, dear God. Swift Birdie's not bad. Harpies to make sure he doesn't have any back row to stop her. Sonic Duck. Oh, he lost Ring of Destruction. That's a big loss. Uh, one problem is, uh, yeah, you just gave him exactly what he wanted. So, go ahead. Chazzy boy, show them what you can do. Stand by face, special summon, the best card ever. Arm Dragon level five, a classic. Harpy's right back at her. Now let's see that card go away forever. Get rid of the stupid magic cylinder. Summon the opponent's, mon or your monster, doesn't matter which. Um, Who else? Premature, okay, you're going, okay. Now you're going a little hard on the, she's, okay. Calm down. You're going a little too hard there, buddy. You got 5,800 attack points. It's a little much. It's a little much. Premature Burial gets Sonic Duck, of course. That gets Swift Birdie. 
Swift Birdie doesn't do much, but it's going to try. You should have killed the Polarm while you had a chance. Because Arm Dragon Level 5 is probably going to pop you with its effect. You, you know what? You see the problem here? You see how you're not killing the opponent? Jasmine, you had to do it aggressively. You can't do it passively. I understand there are benefits to doing passively. But do you understand the negative side of things? Do you see the problem? I see the problem. The problem is the duel is basically over. You have one turn left, and you got no cards. You got a top deck Dark Hole or Bust. Monster Born, is there anything in the grave that you can actually use? Swift Birdie with no combo? Just a set? Hunter Owl in attack mode for no reason? Just, just end it. Just end it. All right, Arm Dragon level five goes in, and Pile Arm Dragon goes in, and Chaz wins game number one. These win decks went up against each other, and the winner was Chaz. So let's get into the game number two, and we're going to see who has the better win deck. Yeah, he's used that Pile Arm Dragon a few times, but he's never. It's only gotten him to top eight, I believe. That's the farthest he's ever got with it. All right. A little monster heavy on her hand this time, but you know, with Sylphie, it can. Oh, don't play Harpy Lady 1 in your opening card. Don't start with Harpy Lady 1. You need that card. Oh, hi there. Open Pile Arm. That's fun. Arm Dragon level 10? Yeah, that's a lot of damage. That's 6,100 damage. That's nice. Things are nice. I love Chaz. I love him so much. All right, let's get a good card out of here. What do we got? Call the Haunt. That ain't going to help you. Sylphie time? Not even going to Sylphie. MST, you're not even going to get a revival. All right. If you guys want to take a look at it, here you go. This Pile Arm Dragon. He looks like that. He has, like, multiple drills. All right. Arm Dragon level 5 destroys. Arm Dragon level... Oh, sorry. Pile Arm Dragon goes in. Arm Dragon level 5 is going to evolve. We have Arm Dragon level 7 with the same stats as Pile Arm Dragon. Now they're going to XYZ XC. Get ready, baby. How do I feel about Pile Arm Dragon? I like that it has multiple drills on its arm. That's kind of cool. Ring of Destruction could have ended this duel if uh, it had its old school effect, but yeah. Yeah, it's over. Alright, Pot of Greed comes in. Pot of Greed's gonna get nothing because Pile Arm Dragon is just gonna. Really? Okay. Selfie's gonna make you discard. You lost a sword. You did not care about swords. Chaz Princeton has obliterated his opponent. It is over. Chaz, that Pile Arm Dragon is kind of like Sarah Teaker, Teakers, Sarah Taker's Eldritch. If you draw it, you're in a pretty good spot. But then there are duels where you just don't draw it, and then you don't even make it past top eight because you want to disappoint me. But here we go. So we're going to go ahead and get back into it. Chaz Princeton's moving forward. The next duel is the final duel of round one. It's Bastion Misawa versus Sartorius. So, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at these characters. Bastion Misawa and Sartorius. Alright, let's get going. Bastion is ready. Sartorius is ready. And let's watch these two go at it. We got ourselves this card. It's kind of risky to play it. That is why it's risky. You just gave your opponent a tribute. That was hor- How are you a prof- I know it's money. He's a professor because of money. But holy fucking shit. That was your opening play? That was your opening play? I'm- I'm pissed. That was horrible. That was absolutely horrible. Hey guys, I'm here to duel a student. Here's my monster, Dark Hole! <laughs> just, just, Dark Hole my own monster. That turn one is legendary. Duo Terion has a very nice effect. We're gonna use it to search out a monster, Oxygenon. And these two are gonna work together to destroy the Empress. And with her gone, we can do easy damage to the opponent. Sartorius is embarrassing himself. Oh, now you have the card that could have made your card fine. Oh, you don't even get to keep it. That card could have made your card fine, but no. I know, I wish they did too, but Duo, the AI doesn't know about Tutorion's other effect. Can't figure it out. Ooh, that in the hand is really good. Having that card in the hand is extremely good. Oxygenon is here. And goodbye, the lovers. And goodbye, 4,000 life points. You have one turn left, and the only play I can think of is Set the Fool. 
or you lose. That is actually it. That is it. Monster Reborn just to set. That means you... Oh my god, you're setting that card. Don't do it. If you just gave them another tribute, I'm going to be so pissed at you. Holy shit. Holy shit, you are bad. You are like a whole new level of what bad is. I am impressed. Oh man. Oh man, are you bad. That might have been Sartorius's worst duel. That is that 100%. That was his worst duel. That might be worse than any duel he's had in Tag Force tournaments. All right. Well, let's go ahead and let's get into the next duel because that was that was something. That was that was something. Sartorius versus Adrian, who is worse? Sartorius could kick Adrian's ass. He just got unlucky with coin flips and didn't get his field spell. Ooh, speaking of trap cards, though, look at that. Back row, Mathematician is a very scary start. You don't want to let him use that. Living Fossil's fun, too. Mathematician's like, hey, Carboneton, go to the grave. Hey, Carboneton, get back, my, give me my Diamond Dragon. By using the Carbon Molecules, I can get Diamond Dragon to the field. And then the Lovers will be summoned. The Lovers don't get either of their effects because they were simply flipped by battle. Ring of Destruction will get rid of said Lovers, which is a shame. That's a lot of damage to both characters. And we have a new set. Boom. All right. Oxygeton. That's really good. We got an Oxygeton, a Hyanzan Ryu, and a Mathematician, and goodbye, Magician. Funny enough. Scapegoats are here to try and save the day, but I don't like his odds. I really don't. The Lovers is an annoying boss fight in Persona 3 Reloaded. I beat them, though. I beat them. Tough fight. All right. So he's got three scapegoats, which are adorable, as if they matter. And we're going to see what uh, he can do to buy himself more time. We have ourselves a set and no back row or field spell. So he's in a horrible position. Whereas uh, this guy is in a great position because he could clear out all of those scapegoats and your monster card. Oh, look, it's the crappy monster. <laughs> it really is. All right. That crappy monster may be gone, but there's still more to come. Cup of Ace is really good. Let's see if he gets lucky. He's not lucky at all today. Sartorius is having the worst luck of his life, and he's out of the tournament immediately. That luck has knocked him out of my tournament as fast as humanly possible. I can't believe it. That was a weird tribute, but I guess if you living fossil, it does not matter. Game's still game. A uh, game that winning attacks are coming in. Get him out of here. Hyun's on Ryu. You know we want to see it. All right. Diamond Dragon has done it. Bastion Misawa. Not bad. Oh, still a pretty good duelist. Still pretty good. Yeah, I hope White Dorm Duelist is a bunch of clowns plus Aster because Aster's actually good. Yes, I agree. I agree with your statement. All right, Bastion. Looks like you aren't so, you know, craving friendship in my series. Unlike the anime, which is one of the cringiest things you've ever done. Uh, let's go ahead and move Bastion Masaba forward. And let's get into round two of our tournament. The first fight is Professor Sartir versus Tanaka. All right, Tanaka, you're going to be taking on one of the planetary duelists right now. I wish you luck. We all know Duel Academy can do it today. They've already knocked down every planetary duelist. We haven't seen a single planetary duelist win, though... It's because they were up against the strongest Duel Academy duelists, and I feel very bad for them. Kami and Cherry got super unlucky. Still, and Kami almost did it. Gotta give Kami some credit. She almost did it. Still, we're gonna see if Professor, Professor Sartir can make up for that. Let's go ahead and let's get into the duel. All right, their faces should be ready. Now we could just take a look at uh, what they're looking at. Oh, we got both its tributes and nothing to use them with. Resonance might help. Resonance, oh, he threw away Uranus. Of course he did. It's all right. Resonance might help. It'll, it'll help him search for more stuff, even though it'll be level eight, but whatever. Uh, hi, medium piece. And medium piece will destroy it. Double doom dozer. Sure, that could be really good if you throw some... Oh, don't do that. Okay, by doing that, you put yourself in a really rough position, I must admit. But this will help, because you throw away Metal Armor Bug, and now you have a combo. 
So with Metal Armor Bug in the grave, we already know what play he's about to make, and it's going to be real good. Oh, it's going to be real good. Premature Burial comes out, and with this, we're going to summon the Metal Armored Bug. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get Insect Armor whatever. And now that thing has 3,500 attack and nothing's going to stop it except a Dark Hole. Not even the Mighty Uranus could stop that. Well, Mega Rock Dragon's pretty good, but it ain't stopping it either. You fool. You poor, unfortunate soul. All right, 3,500 easily devours the Mega Rock Dragon. Goodbye. Bird in Sanctuary, get on there. Oh, nope, you're not going to play it. You're a weirdo. It does destroy everything in its path. What is Uranus' effect? I don't know. I didn't really read the planetary cards. I gave it to them. I didn't read them. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think I am? A non-duelist? I have, I have over five Let's Plays on my channel that involve dueling. Alright, so damage comes through. We're going to get a draw. We have ourselves a set. He has no monsters up to this point. He still has no monsters. Giant Rat goes away. Obelisk the Metal Armored Bug. I love that. Or the Metal Armored Tormentor. The Metal Armored Tormentor. That, that's a name. The Metal Armored Tormentor. I need a, I need a reskin of Obelisk. Just give it a bunch of arms. It'd be creepy. Little insect arms. Neobug. That used to be his only beater monster back in uh, the first ever Duel Academy tournament. And it helped him win that tournament, which was, uh, which was beautiful. All right. There goes the little piece. Didn't stand a chance. And that's 4,000 attack is doing way too much work. So unless uh, Sartorius has a play that we don't see coming. Premature Burial don't matter. Well, you, yeah, good job. You got back your little bastard in attack mode, no less, with no life points. You got back that little adorable guy. Oh, my God. He can end the duel right now. Metal Armor Bug with 4,700 attack of just ends this duel. Tanaka did not care. He just he just literally just blew up his opponent. He was like, you know what? I don't care what your Uranus does because I'm just going to overpower you. You have no chance of winning today's duel. You don't matter as a person, Professor Sartir. You were forgotten, okay? In the first Tag Force game, we can't even duel you. In the second Tag Force game, we can't even duel you. But at least you do something in that game. And it ain't teaching, I'll tell you that. Right, I'm taking this off. It's getting hot. All right, we don't need that. All right, we're going to get ourselves Attack the Moon. We got Big Piece Golem. Big Piece Golem's going in. Pinch Hopper, you can get Insect Knight, but Insect Knight doesn't stand a chance. I love any character that runs Attack the Moon, though, as it makes me laugh. Of course, Harpy's Feather will make quick work of it, so that's a shame. Well, Rock Bombardment will do its job. Goodbye, Uranus. And, uh, yeah, Big Piece Golem's going to hold the field, which is really nice. Medium piece golem into small piece golem. We got the golem combo. They invited the whole family today. It's not going to work. You need more attack points. You have 1,100 and you chose that. You dummy. You actual dummy. And you should have done it. You know, you know you're scared, but you should have done it. Pinch Hopper is going to do it for you, even though it's not really a good idea to do it that way. I guess you did it to put a card in the graveyard. Fair enough. I understand. But Insectopede isn't exactly worth right now. All right, medium piece golem bit the dust. Is that real? Did we hit our follower goal? We did it, yeah! We hit 2,100 followers. Sorry, I didn't notice until it alerted me. That's freaking awesome. Thank you all so much for helping me hit 2,100 followers. I know it's very hard to grow on Twitch, but we're doing it. We're freaking doing it. I didn't even know that was possible. All right, Insect Knight is here. Insectipede is not here if he goes for that. Interesting, don't just attack, please. Oh dear God. Oh, dear God, you're making huge misplays, Tanaka. You actually are making misplays. And there goes Kaiser Seahorse, but Big Piece Golem is giving you this much trouble? I These are huge misplays by Tanaka, and now he's in trouble. Pot of Greed comes through, and now he can get more stuff. Monster of Born comes through. It's Uranus! All right, everybody, say hello to the Despair Uranus. I don't know what it does. Oh, it has something to do with Tribute Summoning. If you're not Tribute Summoning, you're not using it. And game-winning attack comes from Uranus. Tanaka is in trouble. One more duel. Will Tanaka get knocked out by an American Academy duelist? Or <clears throat> will he clutch it for his fans? He just needs to have more attack points. That's it. Just have more attack points. 
That resonance insect is the game changer, though dark hole this early is really bad because you've seen what the AI do. That resonance insect is gonna help a lot. Giant rat's coming through. Giant rat is gonna get rid of the insect. The insect's like, hey, you know, be a really cool card. Freaking Doom Dozer. And Doom Dozer is here. Burden Sanctuary is really good. All right, Neo Bug is here. Burden Sanctuary is going to back you up. Giant Rat does want to die, but at the same time, who cares? Neo Bug's too powerful for anything it can summon. And the rat will get more rats. I'm a big fan of Uranus. Good to know, Foolish King. Now I know where you got your name. Attack the Moon is hilarious if you had a rock monster, but Giant Rat does not qualify for that. Pot of Greed comes through. Pot of Greed is going to get Pinch Hopper, but we don't need it right now. Guy Power is clutch as hell, though both characters could use it. Except for Uranus. Uranus is not an Earth monster. Alright, Resonance Insect has returned to the field. Giant Rat is going to die, but anything it summons will die with it. Small Piece Golem didn't... Is that a rat? Is that face down a fucking rat? It's a fucking rat. God damn it. Alright, and the rat comes through into Barrier. Trust me, he does not care. All of his monsters are Earth. He does not care, sir. Mega Rock Dragon doesn't matter. Granted, Attack the Moon is real. You got rid of the buff. Release from the stone is real. That's not a very good target. That's the best. Oh, here it comes. The big Uranus. And with its art, the Despair Uranus. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. The Despair Uranus is here. And with this, its effect. It gains 300 attack for every face-up spell and trap card. On your side, probably. And yeah, Dark Hole makes quick work of it. Bye bye. And you know what's about to happen, everybody. That is funny, Hib uh, Hibiscus or I I Higsby. I don't know. Your name. You're funny. I like that. It was good. That was a good comment. Very funny. All right, that is a crazy hand to have with Insectopede just sitting right there. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy crap! Talk about a comeback! That dark hole literally just destroyed the opponent. What are you gonna do now? You lost Uranus, which is the only thing that has a chance of taking on the Doom Dozer. What could you do? Last play is a set, you know it's over. When they set, they sweat, and this is it. Tanaka is here to play, and he's gonna end the- No! Holy shit! Wait, there's a magic cylinder. It's still over. I saw that. There's a magic cylinder and it's so... Don't play that in attack mode. What the... F Wait. No. The AI always sets. We've seen it yesterday. The AI always sets when they're the aggressor. So why, for the first time in your life, did you play it in attack mode when you literally have an effect when you flip? Explain. Tanaka saw lethal. Tanaka... Tanaka just threw away Magic Cylinder. Tanaka just threw. I don't see a burn card. Tanaka just threw. Morphin Jar's in attack mode. Call of the Haunted can get Resonance, which will give a... Yeah, you get a level 8. Do you even have any more? Do you even have... No, I'm being honest. Do you even have any more? This has been a long duel now. A lot of cards have been thrown. I guess you still get Burden Sanctuary, which is good to give you a Neobug or an Insect Knight or anything like that. Insect Knight's very nice. Um, do you do. Okay, Doom Dozer will end this duel. Monster Born! It's back! It's back! The Despair Uranus has returned! And with 3,500, with 3,800, with two Uranuses! His mom lets him have two Uranuses! He's gonna win, isn't he? No, it's close. It's close. It's enough. It's totally not enough. Holy crap. Holy crap. There's no way. Tanaka, go, go, go. This duel is so hype. The double Uranus isn't enough. Tanaka, get the Morphin Jar. The Doom Dozy is here. Here comes the power up. Here comes the game winning attack. And it's over. Tanaka takes down one of the planetary duelists. Zero Planetary Duels have won today, but most of them have put up insane fights. Professor Sotir, that was probably the best duels I've ever seen from you.
We've gotten some insane fights from the American Duelist, but they're losing to all the best duelists that Duel Academy has to offer. It's pretty brutal. So, we're going to go back to our bracket. And we're going to see who's up next. That was only the first fight of round two. Jesus Christ, that was hype. All right. The next duel is Aster Phoenix of the White Dorm versus Velian Crowler, the professor of the Raw Dorm. What a loser. All right. Ancient Gears versus Destiny Heroes. Who would you bet on them? I don't think these guys ever fought in the anime, so this can be hype as shit. I did use that line, and then it was Cyberjar, and it ruined everything. Literally ruined everything. That duel could have gone the other way because of that Cyberjar, and I don't think anyone saw it coming, which was the best part. Oh, man, that duel. That was a duel. All right, Aster Phoenix is ready to go. Professor Crowler, give me a little extra time, is ready to go. All right, these guys are good to go. We're going to watch. We're going to have fun today. Oh, he loves this ancient gear. Oh, I would not have thrown away castle. Unless you have a backup castle. Oh, you don't care! Holy shit, he's done it again! The ultimate ancient gear golem! All right, Celestial is dead, and that fusion gate has no value unless you top. You have to top deck Dogma or Plasma. It's top deck those or die. That doesn't matter. Holy shit! Holy shit! Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem is busted. MST. Even if you could activate it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, he still has a chance. Draw Plasma or Dogma or die. That is it. That is his only chance. Plasma or Dogma. That doesn't work. That's not a Destiny Hero. Celestial. Celestial is an interesting idea, but you didn't summon Stratos. No! You didn't summon... Oh, he would have had to guess. Fair enough. Oh, and he could double cycle in the Fusion Gate. Shit. It was no... There was no chance. There was no chance. He would have just chained on the Fusion Gate's effect. There was zero chance. Crowler just had every... He had every card to counter him. Opening ultimate HE Gear Golem and your opponent doesn't just have a, you know, a classic Fisher card like Tanaka has. Yeah, you're just gonna get wrecked. Ain't, that was insanely fast. Holy crap, compared to the last duel? That was nothing. Aster Phoenix, you're supposed to be the second strongest duelist. What the hell is happening to you? Crowler did pretty good in the last tournament, I know. But someone knocked Crowler out. I don't remember who did it. Someone knocked him out. And Crowler didn't fuse nearly as much. Ancient Gear Castle is really good. Ancient Gear Knight, classic monster, nothing wrong with that. 18 beater. Rhoda can get you a Stratos, and you can also uh, do some stuff. Was it Jim? Jim makes a lot of sense if it was Jim. But I didn't. Well, I don't remember the last tournament that he was in, sadly. Uh, we're gonna throw away a Destiny Hero to get two more. I'd throw away that uh, Doom Lord. He don't need it. Ah, Defender's pretty handy. Plasma's really handy. Holy crap! Giant Trinity buys you more time, so that's pretty good. Doom Lord's gonna do its thing. Um, if you can get Fusion Gate, you can instantly get what you need, and then you have game. Because freaking no one's beat Dragoon yet, when you actually get it. Ancient Gear Castle's here. Double Cyclone's interesting to use with Ancient Gear Castle. I would not have done that. Though, you did hit a good card, I must admit. Oh, you could just get another one. Never mind. Nah, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Never mind. He knows what he's doing. He's got this. Yeah, if he lost to Jim, then it makes a lot of sense. Because Crowler's way better than we thought. There are so many good characters hidden behind the fact that they got beat by other good characters. Like, think about Kami today. Everyone's not going to remember her, but we should remember her. Cherry, we don't know how good she could have been. She had to fight Jim. We have no clue how good she could have been. We don't know. We just don't know. Oh, no. You're right. Plasma's coming. Hey, Abra Lowell, thank you so much for subbing. Always Abra good to Lala, see you. Sub hey Classic sub bud. Uh, yeah, you're not going to win this, Crowler. Plasma is going to just destroy you. And he's going to eat a pretty powerful monster when he does it. Do not dark hole, please. Please, for the love of God, don't dark hole. Okay, strata. Wait, are you going to dogma instead of plasma? I would plasma. You disagree. I think plasma's effect is so good that it should be summoned over dogma most of the time. Granted, I get that this will do a huge amount of damage due to them having the most life points they'll ever have right now. 
but it's going to be really hard to get those scapegoats back and stuff. So, and I know it's really hard to beat Dogma. Not even Ancient Gear Golem can do that, but still. Hey, Scarpman, thank you so much for subbing. I appreciate that. You guys are great. I love all of you. All of you are so helpful. Speaking of which, Crowler is going to need some help after this because you're, you're in trouble. You are in a lot of trouble. Holy crap. You need to do something here. A set is not enough. But again, thank you so much for subbing, guys. You guys are great. And now you don't have to worry about ads, which I, I really appreciate. Diamond Dude is here. Fusion Gate was next. Ah, oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. You should have just let it happen. But I understand. And there goes the Ancient Gears. You're right. A Golem could have killed it, Amon. I just like the no effect thing. It stops a lot of things like this thing searching. See what, I, see what I'm talking about? But it doesn't matter, because what if they are... Well, they didn't already have They would have summoned something by now. They seem to be in a bad spot. Crowler is probably one turn away from death, depending on what this guy does. If you use Destiny Draw on Plasma, you probably win. Okay, you didn't do it. Well, <clears throat> this is Crowler's last turn. And he's probably going to have to win in one turn, because the opponent will just Dark Hole Swords afterwards. And the last turn, he does have Gadgetron, and it's not strong. Oh, that sucks. He just wanted to summon. He's like, okay, I admit it. You're stronger than me. This is the strongest thing I have. I just wanted to show you. It isn't strong enough. And there it is. Drill Dark will end the duel. Game two goes to Aster Phoenix. The second strongest student at Duel Academy. All right. Well, he, he just wanted to show off that he had a cool, powerful monster just like Aster. But Aster's monster is above cool because it beats 3K. Hell, it beats Black Skull Dragon. So it's definitely really cool. Yeah, they're pretty evenly matched so far. I agree. It just depends on... Because Crowler, when he got that super early freaking fusion monster, there was no chance. There was no chance. Potagree comes through. Potagree gets a bunch of cards. Gear Town's super good for Crowler. Uh, that card's interesting, depending on what he throws. He throws MST, which he's not going to use on the face down, which is interesting. Uh, Ancient Gear, whatever, is going to just let him... You know what? That's good for you, unless your opponent tributes. That's interesting. You're probably going to wish you kept that Fisher. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. We're about to see a lot, aren't we? AI's not willing to do it. Okay. AI's not willing to do it. That's fine. They have swords. They're just going to buy themselves time. I guess they don't really have enough Destiny Heroes in the grave to bring them all back. So if they wait, they'll get more. All right. Throws away Gear Town. Gets more Golems. You love your Golems, don't you? Ancient Gear Soldier. Okay. I'd love to see the classic one. This is the old, This is probably the oldest Ancient Gear monster you're going to find is good old Ancient Gear Soldier or Ancient Gear. Something like that. But he stopped running that after Season 1 of my series. Ancient Gear Beast. That's another classic monster that I do love. Monster Born. I don't know if I'd do that. Oh, now you're done waiting. Okay, he's done waiting. He, he He's realized that he doesn't have enough time to wait. So, goodbye all of these. And we're going to summon a bunch of freaking uh, Dragoons. Even if he can't bring them all back, he just does not want to have to deal with this. And I can kind of understand that. All right. The Dragoons are coming to town. And they're going to start activating their effects. Goodbye, Doggo. 2,300 burn. Goodbye, Soldier. 1,600 burn. But they die due to chain material. But they'll come back next turn, and he still has swords. Double Cyclone is interesting because it gets rid of Gear Town. If you had hit swords, I would have called you a genius. But you're Crowler, so I, you know, it's hard to call you a genius. So now he is going to be able to bring back one monster, as I believe there's one Destiny hero in the grave, which, you know, that's good. At least you can bring something back. Yep, that's your uh, guy. And Monster Born for the other. Yeah, there you go. This is the end of the duel. Every it was already the end, but who cares? Dragoon's effect destroys Gadgetron, and Gadgetron ends the duel. Aster Phoenix is our guy. Yeah, Crowler's not the smartest, uh, smartest guy in the world. He could have used the Fusion Gate, didn't know how. AI just doesn't know how. And that's why he's not here anymore. Aster Phoenix, yeah. I mean, Crowler did try today. He had some really good plays here and there. But at the end of the day, he wasn't good enough. So let's uh, let's go to our bracket and let's check out who's next. The next fighters are going to be... 
Leslie. All right, we haven't seen Leslie fight yet. This is one of the planetary duelists from American Academy. Leslie is going to be going... Oh, hi, Rescue Squad. Always good to see you. Leslie is going to be going up against Cyrus Truesdale. Stop saying roids. It's not going to work on Leslie. Leslie's a planetary duelist. Ch uh, Cyrus got lucky. Super lucky. I don't... It's not going to happen. All right. Planetary duelist versus Cyrus. Barbaroid. <laughs> All right. Boldman's prediction of Barbaroid. Not going to happen, but I like that you have some confidence in Cyrus. Just because he won one duel today. All right. Leslie is ready to duel. Cyrus is ready to duel. We have ourselves a basic set. Nothing wrong with that. Watch Sire sweep. Not, not going to happen. What? Now that Jaden's gone, Cyrus is just going to start sweeping? Familiar Knight dies, but not by battle. Droroid's one of his better Roid cards, I admit. Not like it matters. Getsufuma will make quick work of it. Oh, hi, Getsufuma number two. Getsufuma number two gets the power of mages and can go in for 20 ton of a bitch. You did that to yourself. Okay, that wasn't smart, but it's fine. It's not like Cyrus is going to fuse with Droroid. Highly unlikely. Very unlikely that that, that could happen. Exactly. See, not happening. And now you have the power advantage, and you can just get another Getsu Fuma, and you can get another Mage Power, which is unnecessary in my opinion, but you don't agree with me, so whatever. Goodbye, Drillroids. Goodbye, uh, Stealthroid. Very nice to get rid of that. And next turn, Cyrus is uh, in the hot seat. I don't see him coming back. Psy gonna die? I love that. That's right. If it rhymes, it works. That means it's going to happen. Two Giant Germs is unlucky, but you don't need any of them. You have too much power as is. Truckroid's a little annoying. I'll give you that side. But at the end of the day, it doesn't stop anything. You still take some damage. Unless you draw Dark Hole, I can already see game here. Premature is not helpful at all, is it? No, you're only helping thinning, you're only thinning out your opponent's deck. But I got them to 5k. Who cares, Cyrus? You're killing yourself. Armageddon Knight throws away the Grand Jupiter, which is a horrifying card that should not be in the- Oh my god! No, Cyrus, wait! Cyrus stole the planetary monster! Grand Jupiter's on the wrong side of the field! Grand Jupiter throws away two cards, and it eats the opponent's monster! What the fuck? What? Hit your- wait, you drew- okay, count, that's one for today, they drew three germs. Grand Jupiter's effect, it summons the monster. There are four monsters on Cyrus' side of the field. He stole Jupiter. Jupiter's on the wrong team. Drillroy pops Getsu Fuma. Getsu Fuma gets rid of Armageddonite. Truckroy devours Giant German. I do mean devours. So yeah, Grand Jupiter's effect, discard two, eat an opponent's monster. Really good effect in my opinion. That's really nice. Uh, Gyroid, Grand Jupiter. Leslie is sweating. Leslie has no idea what just happened. That's not going to save Leslie. Leslie's screwed. Holy shit. Leslie does 400 damage before her death. She can't believe that Cyrus stole the monster, had exactly two cards in his hand, which he needed just to discard and get her monster. Truckroid is now a monster with 3,400 attack. It's one of the brutals. I'm not doing something like that, Bernard, but that's funny. I thought that is funny. And there it goes. Cyrus ain't no thief. <laughs> Cyrus Truesdale. Actually, yeah, Leslie was told he'd be an easy win. Only to get the monster that she threw away, Monster Reborn, to his side of the field. Game number two, here we come. That was some bullshit. That was some bullshit, and I don't think it'll happen again. Cyrus is a thief after what he just did. Oh, she has Grand Jupiter in opening hand, so if she finds a way to discard it, Easy summon. And Getsu Fuma's just a solid monster. Only a steamroid's gonna beat that. She <laughs> Draw steamroid immediately. Damn. It's too good of a play. Can't beat it. Alright, let's see what else. Familiar Knight, classic card. Nothing, not necessary card, but, you know, classic. Steel steamroid, interesting. So don't do it, Cyrus. Don't do it. Why are there so many Cyrus fans out of nowhere? You guys, where'd you come from? All right, instead of summoning Grand Jupiter, we're going for multiple beatdown, which I think is an un understandable play because even if Cyrus kills one of these monsters, you can just summon Jupiter next turn, unless they get Dark Hole. But even then, this did so much damage that uh, Cyrus is almost dead. Drillroid is nice. 
Uh, Steamroid can't stand up to it, but I know a card that can. Cyrus, oh, that's a good card. Reasoning, but what are they going to pick? They pick level four. It's level three. The double familiar knight into Grand Jupiter. The planetary card is in, and the duel is almost over. Granted, she does not have a hand. She can't use Jupiter's effect. It just is a really nice beater monster at this point. It's just a Neos. Submarine Roy to try and do some damage back, but the duel is most likely over. It seems like Cyrus has met his match. Thank God. Just do it. Just end it. Grand Jupiter can beat Sub. And then Getsufuma can beat anything. Except Call of the Haunted into Drill. Uh, Steam Roy was a horrible choice. Drill Roy would have been cheaper. Alright, well, unless you draw a Dark Hole and a Harpy's Feather Duster, I'd say give up. Haunted Greed's an interesting last top deck. Ah, yep, it's over. I don't think he's a Cyber Jar guy, so don't even think about it. It's over. It's over. Another Jupiter in the grave just for fun. Gyroid will last one attack, but it won't stand up to Grand Jupiter's direct attack. The game-winning attack is here, and that is the end of the duel. Leslie takes game number two now that she's taken things seriously and realizes Cyrus is a threat. So we're going to be going into game number three and we're going to see if Cyrus can make a comeback happen. The only way he could do it is fusion. If he doesn't steal her monster, he has to fuse. So this is it. Game three. Will this be the first planetary duelist to make it past round two? Well, to win a, to win a match. They've all been unlucky, but Cyrus is probably the easiest opponent they can get. No offense to Cyrus, who already beat Jesse and beat Leslie once today, which is really impressive. Strike Ninja is here. Classic card. Mage Power is a nice card to give it. And the attack is too good. Oh, Gyroid's classic. All right, a classic Gyroid can hold it back. But like I said, that is too much damage. You're not going to be dealing with that monster anytime soon. So Cyrus, think of a different plan. Cyrus is going to play the defensive route. But Familiar Knight can back it up, and then that Gyroid doesn't stand a chain. Ooh, we got a pot of greed. What are we going to do with that? All right, Pot of Green got extra Mage Power. Armageddon Knight would be an amazing play. Armageddon Knight into Grand Jupiter once again. Mage Power comes through. Strike Ninja is unstoppable now. Granted, there is no entry into this duel. <laughs> Strike Ninja is going back into attack mode, but the rest of this doesn't matter. Cyrus is in a very, very problematic situation right now. He's going to have to figure this out. Car Trooper is hilarious that he even did this when his life points are going to be literally near zero. You know what? You get to draw one card because of this play, size, so I guess it matters. And you weakened your opponent, so... No. You were supposed to save that until you figured it out, Cyrus, not use it immediately. That was stupid as hell. Alright, Cyrus threw the duel. That card may have given him a comeback chance, but he, he threw the duel. Oh, that is valuable. Oh, no! Don't do that! I know you... The 47's worth it, Leslie! The 47's worth it! Wait, Cyrus, did you just do something valuely? This might work. I can't say anything now. I have no clue who's going to win. Oh, I really don't know who's going to win. I got no clue. I got no clue here. <laughs> what the hell is happening? I know it's very hard for the AI to decide that 4,700 damage is worth it. I understand that. But now you're in danger because your cards are weaker than Cyrus's somehow. Cyrus. Nah, he's throwing, man. He's bricked and he's throwing. Fourteen hundred. All of you that bet on Cyrus, that is the that is the horse you bet on. The guy that just dark hold a familiar knight. He at least has a set, and some of his defense mode monsters are good. UFO Roid, yeah, that would be one of his bricks. Gatsufuma's pretty good, unless it's a really good defensive monster. Gyroid is nice, but not nice enough. It's going to be over. It's going to be over. Cyrus needs some sort of combo card, or he's just out of this duel. Okay. Oh, I've never seen him play that in my life. Not even in test duels. I, I don't know what that... If your Roid monster battles, you could send one Roid monster from your deck to the grave. Switch the original attack and effect. She drew Snatch Steel! Leslie has stolen the monster! Now who is the real thief? 
Who is the true thief now, Cyrus? You lose, sir. Good day, sir. Leslie will be the first planetary victor, in my opinion. Megaroy, what the hell? Yeah, good for you. You got a steamroid. Don't matter, loser. Truckroy, don't. Well, that's... Oh! Oh, it do not matter now. You tried, Cy. You tried. And you fail. Well, there's one trap, but he probably failed. That is crazy. Game-winning attacks. Here they come. That was a really good play. Giant Germ instantly wins the duel. The winner is Leslie. Amazing play. I, I will admit, as stupid as some of that was, I really enjoyed this match. This match was a lot of fun. Cyrus, you screwed over all of your fans. All three of them. So, let's go ahead and let's uh, get into the next bracket. So, I hope you guys enjoyed Leslie's deck. It's kind of interesting in its own way. That Jupiter card can be real problematic if you have some cards in your hand. Acting like a relinquished. Um... The next duel is Principal McKenzie. The principal is going up against Jimmy. Jim Crocodile Cook, the strongest duelist we know. We all know how powerful Jim is. He has defeated everybody except Joey Wheeler. <laughs> and I'm not joking that his only loss in a match is Joey Wheeler. So, uh, Principal McKenzie, where are you? Oh, let's see how these two duel. They're going to have to give us something interesting. I'm ready to start. Starting with Fossil Fusion is very strong for the for the Mr. Jimmy. And Mizuki is an okay start for the principal. Miracle Rupture is also extremely nice. Did you just Dark Hole fucking Mizuki? Jesus Christ. Don't start the duel. Don't be Cyrus and don't start the duel with Dark Hole. Those are my only two recommendations to all future duelists out there. Alright, the knight is nice because you get Gaia played. If you can use I think it's once per turn, so you can't use Miracle Rupture again. But your card your opponent has a card in the grave, and now that Mizuki is banished, that's actually pretty good. Um so I guess there was a use for it. It just uh you know, might not matter if a dark hole happens the other way. He needed Mizuki in the grave. That's right. That's right. Might not matter like I said, though. Gaia Plate will be summoned no matter what, though. So that's going to be very scary. Uh, what can you do, Principal? You're in a really bad spot. Like I said, Dark Hole. But we all know that he's going to get Gaia Plate, which is even scarier than that car-looking thing. And Fossil Fusion's like, ha, huh, nice try. I'm just going to make another one. That's what they do. Mystic Tomato in attack mode. As classic as classic can be. Now, your choice is this. You either Fossil Fuse or you Gaia Plate. I say Gaia Plate. I still say Gaia Plate. I agree with this play because release from the stone was already on the field. And now the damage is insane. Also, we still can do this. Also, that card has an effect. Also, you haven't normal summon this turn. <coughs> Welcome to Jim, everybody. All right. So, Mr. Tomato must pick another tomato target. And it was smart enough to do that. And you have a thousand life points to your name, and that card does 500 burns, so you're probably dead, sir. I appreciate that you attempted something, but your attempts were for nothing. Uh, you are the principle of nothing, and you do not matter. That card does not matter. It's a nice attack point monster, I'll give you that. It does not matter. Unless you have a godlike back row, which you don't. Okay, you have one. Unless you could stop Gaia play with that, you are going to lose the duel. And honestly, they're probably going to fossil the fusion anyway. More car powers. You have enough fossil fusions, I guarantee you that. Release from the stone brings back... Uh, oh, just for 500. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, just do the 500 burn. It's uh, it's going to be perfect. Time stream is unnecessary. Jim Crocodile Cook has been able to defeat the principal in game number one. Uh, can someone remind me how Joey beat this guy? Because I have no clue how he did it. All right, now let's go ahead and get into game number two. And let's see if the principal can pull something else off because he's having some trouble. If the only American Academy duelist uh, to win today is Leslie, I'm going to find that hilarious. Fairy box, that's a good, yeah, that's a good reason to win. Dumb luck, yeah, that would do it. <laughs> that would do it. Double cost on, oh, you finally have some back row and it's gone because they happen to start Harpy's Feathers. Yeah, Miracle Rupture is also really good, giving you a... 
Is that for time stream? No, it's for that guy. That's that's worth it. Harpy's Feather Duster is going to pop all the back. God said no. Let me see it in chat. That one trap better be worth it because you just paid 4K. You just paid 4K for that to happen. 500 damage. Next turn, he has Gaia Plate for sure. So what are you going to do knowing a Gaia Plate is on the way? You're going to summon your... Pl no, even better. Endless Decay. Book of Life. Good combo. Double cost on. And double cost on is not even a normal summon. So we're going to go in. That was a good play. That card will uh, not stop double cost on in defense mode. And... Half your life points are gone. But Gaia Play beats Endless Decay, I believe. So it does not matter. Endless Decay did its absolute best, but he's going to run into an opponent that's stronger. Gaia Plate is here, and Endless Decay is going away. Goodbye. You did 4,000 damage in one turn, and that's real impressive. We're all proud of you. You still are going to lose this. You have no chance. You have no freaking chance. Not unless you have a Fisher. You need a classic card. Pot of Greed is a classic card, I admit, but I meant a classic popping. He got his boss, the Supremacy Sun. This is his planetary card. The strongest card he has. And it's going to go against Gaia Play, which will beat it. So you should have put it in defense. Well, I guess you would have had to set it. But either way, you should have put it in defense mode to save your life points, which are already very low. The sun can't beat the earth. You're right about that. I like that. And no more special summons, which means the sun does not even get its effect off. Not like it was going to. That is it. We got to see the planetary card, but Jimmy has knocked out two American duelists as if they were nothing. I think this man is ready for the big leagues. But he still has a few more duels to go before we can confirm that. American Academy is dueled. Uh, done. Well, we'll see about that. Let's see here. And yes, Jim still lost to Wheeler, who was a pro duelist at the time. Jimmy's ready to go. The next duel is Professor Stein, who we already got to see in the Underground Tournament, and I believe he did actually win a duel or two. I don't remember. I do remember him winning a duel, though. And we're going to see how he does against Axel Brody, a burn deck. Okay, that's rough. Professor Stein versus a burn deck. Ugh, I don't know about that. I think Axel's kind of got your number there, especially after how lucky he got against Alexis. All right, let's go ahead and do this, guys. Let's get into it. Axel Brody versus Professor Stein. Okay, now that these characters are ready to go, let's take a look at these guys. <clears throat> we got Triblaze on the opening turn because he's a cheater. And we got Volcanic Slicer, which will slice through that giant rat like it was butter. And Giant Rat is going to summon an Obnoxious Celtic Guardian, which does not work against uh, a guy like that. That is for sure. Marauding Captain is a very interesting play. You didn't... What? <laughs> you didn't do the play? It doesn't matter. Blue Flame... You should have still done it, but Blue Flame Swordsman comes through. <clears throat> and it will power up the Obnoxious Celtic Guardian. But we all know... We all knew that they can just simply use their Triblaze. And Triblaze will get rid of Obnoxious. And do some burn. And do some burn. And get you more. And do... No, that one does burn, but it also burns you because you want to search for more targets to use for Triblaze. Makes sense. Understandable. All right. That variety Captain's looking pretty good right about now. Oh, hi there, Neptune. You're not necessary at this moment in time, but I'm sure you'll come in handy later. All right. Marauder Captain's going to go in with Command Knight backing him up. Of course, the lock does not work against this opponent when he does pull it off. This is not the lock right now, but if he ever does pull it off, this is one of the few opponents that the lock won't work on. So, we're going to see what he can do. Yeah, we already know you're going to get more shots. And that's two shots to take out both of these targets. Triblaze is going to get rid of Command Knight. You could just beat this one by battle, but you are greedy. And you wish to throw away everything in order to hurt your opponent. Solar Flare does another 500 burn, and you need to get rid of that Triblaze or you're freaking screwed. Another Neptune, an unnecessary card, like I said before. And Solar Flare will bite the dust. Command Knight did its job. The Tyrant Neptune does have a combo, a couple combos in this deck, but right now it's not necessary. 
Try Blaze, you just happen to have another one. Oh, Solar Flare counts. Yeah, it's a py Pyro Monster. 500 damage. There's still Warrior Lady. You could try to come back with Warrior Lady. Hayabusa's pretty good. Hayabusa Knight goes in for 2k damage. This is just like the Tripper Mercury, except like twice as bad. Well, at least didn't have to tribute for it. But yeah, this is the Tripper Mercury. <laughs> I know Tripper Mercury has more effects, but this is the one that mattered. So we're going to go ahead and do some damage and say, say goodbye to that. In terms of burn, it looks like you're actually winning, Professor Stein. But you're not going to win for much longer. That TT might come in handy. It depends on if your opponent's willing to summon or if they just keep going for Triblaze Burn with Volcanic Slicer. Oh, no, they actually summoned. And I'm confused why they did because that's not even... Well, I guess it's not confused. You were going to just win my battle. I get it. But you're searching for something that you don't need unless you already have Doomfire and you just haven't been using it. So the two Neptunes are going to break you up just a little bit, but you're okay. You'll think of something. Warrior Lady. Wow, that's a nice top deck in this situation. Warrior Lady goes in for 1,100 damage, and I would pop that card rather than just, you know, beat it by battle because you don't want to thin out your opponent's deck. You're going to beat it by battle. You just don't want to listen to any information I give you. Understandable. And you're going to have to fight the Obnoxious Celtic Guardian now. Granted, it doesn't get a very nice effect yet, but maybe down the road. All right, Heart of the Cards gets Swords. You could use that to protect yourself, and Triblaze is now going to start going to town. So you can't lose by battle. I get that. But your opponent, most of his deck has to do with just burning you with Triblaze, so battle is not his concern. <laughs> I would have just summoned Hammer and used its burn. That was a bad play by the opponent, but who cares? Command Knight is very nice. Command Knight is a great top deck. It's going to go in. It's got 200 damage going through. Yes, UFO Turtle can search Solar Flare. That is scary. But the life points are close, and I don't know which one's going to take it. Again, we have not seen the combo from Tyrant Nibtoon because they haven't drawn it yet, and they keep getting free. Oh, no! That's extra burn because it was Scattershot. And Soul of Fire for 1,500! And the duel is over by Solar Flare Dragon! Axel Brody has done it! All right, Axel Brody wins the duel. Very nice fashion. He had a nice combo there. Finally starting to get some of these volcanic combos off. He couldn't do it that, that double weekend we'd had with the GX tournament and the Duel Academy tournament. But today he's doing it. So we're going to try this again and we're going to see what happens. Game number two comes up. Interesting hand. Not necessary, but interesting. Giant Rat's a very good start, even though your opponent will probably just pop it. Doesn't matter. You're trying. Soul of Fire for 1,500 burn to start the duel. Ooh, he got part of his combo. And we have ourselves a set. There's nothing wrong with that. And we got Hayabusa Knight. That is 3,400 damage. 3,400 damage in one turn. You just got hit by a freaking Dogma. So good luck to you. It looks like uh, Brody does not have any search to get his Blaze Accelerator, which he needs desperately. Without Blaze Accelerator, he's in a very bad spot. That card's great for later, but you don't have... This time, he doesn't have any of his cards to work with it. Hayabusa would be a smart play right now because you are going to get hurt, but it's only 1,000, and then you can just do it again. Dun -dun 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 and we got 1,200 life points left. It looks like this guy's getting absolutely wrecked. Dax, thank you so much for subbing with the Prime sub. We're doing amazing today. This has been a great day for, you, uh, for Twitch. I'm having so much fun. Blaze Accelerator's coming through. It could be used, but you also could just beat them by battle. It's your call. Blaze Accelerator will be used because that freaking uh, obnoxious Celtic Guardian is quite obnoxious. Uh, call the Haunted. What the fuck are you doing? Does anyone else agree with that Call the Haunted play or is, are you as confused as me? I'm quite confused. Axel Brody has no life points left after making that play and because of that Call the Haunted play, you're about to lose this duel. That's adorable. You don't need to do You're doing that for fun and because I love Flame Swordsman, I assume. We get to see the Mighty Flame Swordsman, and that's good. Warrior Lady's going to end this duel because the enemy was an idiot. And yeah, Axel Brody completely threw game number two. Holy crap, that was bad. It looks like we're going to be going to game number three. And game number three is our best chance. Axel fans, you need to be there and, you know, you need to be there for him. Where's your energy? And then when it comes to Professor Stein, I highly doubt any of you even know where he's from. I know he's from the anime, but most of you probably didn't even know he was from the anime. You all are like, ah, that's just a manga character. Cooper always finds random manga characters. That, no, that's a real one. That, that one came from the anime. All right, Volcanic Guy comes through. We got Triblaze Accelerator. And Triblaze Accelerator is real nice. 
and Soul of Fire on the opening turn is always brutal. 1500 burn before you even have your first turn is just not nice. Uh, you got all your stuff, you just need your boss. Every He has everything he needs except his boss, and that MST is very valuable. He was the Scab Knight user, you're correct. Luckily, those cards don't exist in this game, though they did exist in Tag Force. They were just a little too brutal. And oh, actually, only one of the Scab Knights exists in Tag Force. Alright, TT is gone, which is pretty brutal, but at the same time, your rat is going to help you out. Again, this could be an amazing turn if you just get lucky enough to draw your boss. Drawing your boss monster can decide the whole duel for game number three. Hayabusa is nice, but not nice enough in this situation. Giant Rat can try if you just thin yourself out. That's interesting. Okay, this is very interesting because if you make sure that you have a better card than them by the end of it, then Volcanic Rocket can't beat Obnoxious. Oh, well, can you beat 15? Ooh. Oh, you put it in defense. Oh, dear God. Yikes. That did not work out the way I thought you were trying to make it work out. Not like it matters. He has another monster that can just beat Obnoxious. Oh, you are out of everything. You need to think of something new. You need to think of something new, and you need to figure out how you're going to win this duel. I wish you all the luck in the world, sir. That could try to stall-ish, kind of, not really. You could do your best with that. I appreciate that you could try, but it's, it's not going to work. It's a really bad situation. Holy crap, are you in a bad spot. This is not going to work out. All right, Warrior Lady into Warrior Lady. At least you're doing it right. Warrior Lady into Warrior Lady. It's very important that you pick another one. And then you... Oh, he was smart. He attacked with the rocket first. Now, even if you pick him, not just Celtic Guardian, it won't... Oh, you might be out of them by now. All right. Stein has one card in his deck that works, other than Dark Hole. Tyrant Neptune or Bust? It's Tyrant Neptune or Bust. Oh, shit. Holy shit, he drew it. No, don't pick the Solar Flare. Why would you pick the Solar Flare? You could pick anything. Wait, do you get to pick? You have to be able to pick, right? There's no way. Oh, it looks like he's a fan of Axel Brody. Oh, yeah, he's he's real stupid. Oh, man. Oh, man, he's dumb. All right, get him out of here. I don't want to look at him. You, you, you misused your boss, and you get to die for it. You wanted the burn damage? Oh, yeah, of course. That's so important. <laughs> oh, what an idiot. All right, let's go ahead and let's uh, move on, because Axel Brody has done it. I don't think American Academy has any real duelists left, although we haven't seen some of them. But we're really running out of duelists here. No principal. Only Leslie has one. And she's the only Slifer Red duelist from them. We got Reggie McKenzie, though. Okay. Everybody, can Reggie, can Reggie do it? Can Reggie do it? All right, let's see. Where is she? Reggie McKenzie is ranked as one of the strongest duelists in American Academy, but she's going up against Mindy. They got literally matched up against the best duelists at Duel Academy. They get no breaks today. They're st they're f Mindy's like top three. Mindy is like top three at Duel Academy. She probably is number three. Holy crap. This feels so bad. I feel so bad for all of these powerful duelists just getting the worst matchups ever. But who knows? Maybe, maybe, just maybe Reggie can surprise us. She's going up against the third strongest. Though Reggie's boss is really good. Splendid Venus is really good. She just has to find a way to summon it. Without the ability to summon it, she'll be in trouble. Harpies is real nice, but honestly, you only have Freya right now, so that's a bad start. Freya does combo with a lot of cards in her deck, but still a bad start. <coughs> Alright, Mecha, uh, Mecha Phantom Beast, no. Mecha... Dog Marin is going to do that. Goodbye to your monster. Real shame there. Let's see if you got anything else in this deck of yours. Oh! Oh, Reggie. Oh, Reggie. You are in so much trouble. This is like... This is like a very unlucky opening hand for someone who has as much search as you do. Like, holy crap. I, I, I think we're already going to have to call it. Against a burn deck, you only have 30... Oh, that was the worst! That was the worst opening hand Reggie could have had! 
How does that even happen? Morphe jar and attack. You're getting embarrassed. Mindy. It's not her fault that she got that unlucky. Rara, and thank you for following. Holy God. That was the worst opening hand I've seen in a tournament in a long time. That we actually got to see. I feel so bad. Let's just... Let's just go again. Game number two. That was horrible. No options in that hand of hers. She drew two of her boss monster rather than any sum of... There! Oh! Oh, fun! This is a really good hand, but fun. Look at this. That's two. We're going to call that. That's two. Hackatrice. It can be very good for Valhalla. It's a good play. Archlord Christia is here. One of her better cards. Hecatrice again for backup. I understand. I wouldn't have done it, but I understand. Getting rid of Nimble Momonga means they can't summon anymore. They can still heal, but they can't summon anymore. And Mindy, once again, unlucky, has no back row. Her back row is half her deck. Half her deck is burn monsters. Half her deck is burn back row. Okay, that's a good start. That's a really good monster. Okay. Okay, Fancy Fire Ferret makes up for everything, even though we see a premature in the hand. Oh! Oh, if she can get some burn cards, Mindy's in a great spot right now. Mindy's in a great spot if she gets some burn. Interesting to set that card. I don't know if I would have done that, but you do you. The other one would have thinned out your deck, and that would have been a better idea. That's not good. Mindy has won this duel pretty much. Only because Sylphie gets three turns of burn with this Dark Room of Nightmare and any new spells and traps to come. I, I gotta believe it's over. Valhalla into something. Just drew it. Oh. What? The fuck was that? What was that? No, seriously. I want an explanation. I want a real explanation from a pro from a programmer's point of view. Why? I mm, mm, not liking this. You drew all three. She drew three Hecatrices and three Archlord Christias. Now I'm just done. I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore. Double Dark Room into Thousand Burn. I love it. Gotta do it. Uh, 600 extra damage on top. Yep. Yep. Get a trap card down and just end this duel. Just, 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 just end it. Oh, it sends itself to the top of the deck. I didn't know that. I don't know shit. Thank you guys. Thank you. Never mind. I didn't know. I wasn't paying enough attention, obviously. Get rid of the. Okay. You got rid of the bird. That's fine. But I'm still upset. I still deserve to be upset over some of the bullshit we've seen today. Especially how they summon Christia that to that one turn. Okay, well now, you didn't lose much. You still have Valhalla in hand. Royal Decree sucks to lose, but if any of that is burn, you're in trouble. You need more monsters. Your problem is more... There we go! Where's the basic stuff like... Why didn't you summon it? You still can normal summon. You can still normal summon. Okay, you're a weird, you're a weird one. You know that? You need to go in while you still have a chance, and you're just not going in. Now they have a trap card, and now you're in danger. So you either harpies or die. You don't have harpies, so you're going to die. Nova Sun... Oh, all of a sudden... That's a lot. Well, that trap card decides the duel. That trap card absolutely decides the duel. If it's Call of the Haunted, she can't win. If it's anything else, she wins. It's not... It might be Call of the Haunted, but 400 attack points isn't much. I might have summoned Athena. I'm not going to lie. I probably would have summoned Athena just because Nova's kind of weak. That If that card's burn, you lose. If that's a burn monster and not a search monster, you straight up lose. Oh, Mindy! Get her out. I don't want to look at Reggie. I don't even want to look at Reggie. Granted, that first hand was just bullshit. It's not her fault. Second game, she, she messed up. Reggie messed up in the second game. Yes, go Mindy. And honestly, maybe if Reggie fought an actual fighting person and not a burn character, maybe she would have done better. Who knows? We'll have to wait till another tournament for that to happen. For now, we just are concerned about what happened here. Mindy has done it. The next duel is Saika Kohinata, a character we saw yesterday in the Youth Cup. 
She is another planetary duelist, though her monsters are reptiles. So we're going to see how Saika Kohinata does against Chaz Princeton, the king of games in my heart. Not really. It'd be Joey and then Chaz, but still, I love Chaz. He's awesome. That guy can, that guy can win some duels. Now let's go ahead and get into this. The better Viper, basically. You don't, not focused on Venom Swamp stuff. All right, let's go ahead and let's get this going. Psyka versus... Uh, oh, she already has her boss in her hand. That's interesting. Uh, Chazzy, where are you? Chazzy, there he is. All right, we're good to go. Uh, Chaz has Arm Dragon level 5 on the first turn, and I love it. And he's going to try for Arm Dragon level... S that was an interesting first turn. Just hope that she doesn't get Dark Hole or nothing, and you're in a good spot. Lavi is pretty interesting, though. Also, does Reggie have three Christias? No, I don't even know if she has three Christias. I make the decks, but I make the decks a long time ago, so I don't really remember what they have. I know, I saw her toss TT as well. Broke my freaking heart. Arm Dragon level 5 is going to evolve for sure. That one at least gets bounced back. That's good. Yeah, you're going to have to deal with an Arm Dragon level 7 now, so... You, uh, you know what would be really good right about now? Snake Rain. Snake Rain would be real good. Because you either get Snake Rain or die. Because you threw away TT like an idiot. Oh, you're going to die. <laughs> you are going to die. Holy crap. Arm Dragon level 3 goes in. And Mystic Tomato loses to Arm Dragon level 3. There's no, one Mystic Tomato's in her hand, so we know she's screwed. And the Flying Kamikiris are going to give him infinite monsters. All right, let's see. Lamia, out of desperation. She's out of time anyway. Lamia gets her a dark alligator. She does like her dark alligator. I don't think it'll make a difference, but it's nice that she drew it. Yeah, I think only Pluto can beat Arm Dragon level 7. It would have to be Pluto. Or Evil Dragon Anata with a lot of cards in the grave, but there's not, there's not enough in the grave. Yeah, that's the end of the duel. The other level 8 wouldn't matter. There's not enough reptiles in the grave. It would pop this, but... Then what? Most of these are dark monsters. Arm Dragon level 3 would become Arm Dragon level 5. You know, all that fun stuff. It was a weird target. <laughs> Alright, well, it looks like Saika, who did okay yesterday, is having trouble today. Granted, Chaz is really good. Chaz is like top 8 at the school. So, let's go ahead and see <clears throat> if she can make up for it in game number 2. If she can, then good for her. If she can't, well, then that's probably because she drew no spells and traps and threw them away like an idiot. Five serpents isn't enough. That's for babies. Oh, look, it's the evil dragon. Oh, look, he opened the duel the same exact way. How'd he do that? Hi, arm dragon level five. Hi, master. Okay, not exactly the same, but pretty damn good. I love you, Chaz. I love you, Chaz. All right. Damage equals Reptile is really good for her deck. It buys her a lot of cards. It's gone. Oh, no. Dark Illusion's gone, which is also good for her deck, but not necessary in this moment in time. So are we going to evolve Arm Dragon level 5? We are. We're intentionally evolving Arm Dragon level 5, as Arm Dragon level 7 will definitely give you some trouble. We're definitely not at Arm Dragon Thunders yet. Nowhere near that. Pile Arm Dragons as far as he's going. Uh, Anata, just, oh look, they summoned Anata, that's what you wanted, right? Also, why'd you do this if they, okay, Des Feralim beats Arm Dragon level 7. It doesn't even beat Arm Dragon level 7, but Anata does. There you guys go, you wanted Anata, there it is. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't use damage equals reptile, they got plenty, oh, you know what, no, their weakest card has 13, 14? 1300 attack, I think Lamy has 13 as well. I don't remember. Hi! Look at Cyrus Truesdale over here summoning the freaking alligator. Hi there, Ch freaking Cyrus. Dark alligator. Oh, look, damage equals... No, they have something. Oh, that thing. Okay, they have damage equals reptile activated. They're scared. You didn't attack evil dragon Anata? Why? I know it has low attack, but it's going to kill you. Oh, you're dumb. You are dumb, dumb. Black Mamba's okay if you play it in attack mode, but you're not smart enough to do... Well, I guess you could use Lamia, but not really a good idea. All right, Lamia's coming in. Lamia's got Dark Alligator, but you already normal summon, so you can't really do much with it. You can at least get rid of one of the problems with Anata. 
Now what? Damage equals Reptile might... No, there's no damage from that. Oh, wait. No, there is. Why do you attack with a big monster? Damage equals Reptile activates. Yeah, now what are you going to do? Dark Alligator can be summoned now. And you left Anata again! Stop leaving Anata on the field! It's a good card! We even with 600 attack... Now, it's under, the, it's under the AI radar. It has 600 attack. Therefore, it does not exist. It does not exist. Oh, my God. Okay, it exists all of a sudden. All of a sudden, it, it exists. All right, Monster Aborn, here we come. We're going to steal Arm Dragon level 5. Interesting choice. Are you really going to use it for its effect? No, you're going to summon Dark Alligator like I thought you would. Um, hmm. You're going to have to crash. You actually have to. Yeah. Dark Alligator's effect when crashing. Don't play it yet. Don't play it yet. Be patient. Be patient. Okay? Patience. Good. Good. Good quality. Patience is good quality. Good to see you, Big Smoke. All right, let's see what happens here. Chaz is in a little bit of trouble in game number two, but he he could still win this. She's low on life points. One good magic cylinder, one good other burn card that exists. I don't know. Arm Dragon level five gets rid of... Oh, Dread Dragon can search, though. All right, so he's not going to run out of monsters. Mass Dragon's really good. Now the question is, what will she do to win the duel? Because right now she has some advantage to... She still has some advantage. It's a shame that she lost damage equals Reptile, but that literally, that trap card is the reason she's still good. Yeah, one good pile arm Dragon would do it. He hasn't drawn it in this duel. Snake Rain would be funny if you could use it. It actually would be so valuable if you could use it, but you can't. Welcome. Happy, happy to have you here for today's tournament. He was out of Mass Dragons. No, my boy Chaz, he's out of Mass Dragons. He can't get more. He couldn't get Arm Dragon at the right timing. Oh, he top decked it, my boy! End this duel with your massive 4,300 attack stat. End her. Top decked it. That's all he needed. All right. GG. She, she took too long. She took too long. Chaz knocks her out of here. Other than Leslie, there is only one American Academy person left. And his name is David. No, it's David. All right, let's see how he does. David Rab has to defeat Bastian Misawa, another top eight Dual Academy student. David Rab must defeat Bastian. Or else Leslie is all alone. All right, there we go. And then after, if they all lose, we could just call this a Duel Academy tournament and have fun seeing who's the best. So let's do this. Everyone's ready to go. David versus Bastion. Don't forget, American Academy has way less funding than Duel Academy. They're, they're the ones that are struggling even more. And with Carbonet on, we get a Hyanzan Ryu. Why not? No Fire Dragon for Bastion. They don't want to make it. Machine Assembly Line's an okay card, but I'm guessing that means, yeah, I was going to say, you probably can't beat Hyanzan Ryu, so you're in trouble. Oh, Ring of Destruction. Classic card. <clears throat> that will beat it, but your life points are getting pretty low with that. Hydro Gedon cannot beat Battle Footballer. Okay. Battle Footballer will stay, but you don't have enough cards to summon your big boss monster. Not yet. Uh, Blue Thunder's pretty good. Actually, this is a really interesting play if he's willing to crash. Option to Wait, is it a machine? Option token's a machine! Okay, we got it! Mathematician is going to draw. All right. Hydro Gedon can get a lot of value out of this if it has... Ooh, close. Car Trooper can at least get rid of a problematic card. With its 2100 attack stat, easily. You put some counters on there, though, so be careful. And now you're weak. The token will remain, though, so be careful. Buy TT. Always buy TT. Reflect Bounder's really good. When your opponent's life points are low, it's really good. They're not going to survive one more turn anyway, unless that trap has a, a, a function. No, it's DTO. It's not going to matter. And that is it. David Rab just obliterates his opponent. That was really quick. Bastion would have been fine if he kept that Hyanzan Ryu, but, you know, Ring of Destruction's a bastard of a card. 
Let's go ahead and get into game number two and let's see if Bastion can make up for that. He needed more Duoterions to get the search going. It, it would really help him out. Let's, let's look at Bastion's hand right now, see if he's got it. No, but he got the cluster. Mathematician's a good start, though. Mathematician's always a good opening play. Even against a uh, UFO turtle. Oxygenon's also strong, but Mathematician's... Uh, okay. Oh, that was an early limiter removal. I don't know if I agree with that, because they're just going to monster board, and you straight up lost your monster. All right, Bastion's in a very good position here, already getting past the limiter removal card. Very low cost on that one. UFO Turtle is supposed to die. I don't think he understood that. Uh, Blue Thunder's going to get rid of the card, and we got an Iron Call, which will just do damage. Blue Thunder's coming back out. He's going for as much damage as he possibly can, and I can respect that, even though it will cost him in the end. Well, I guess nothing they have right now could beat uh, a card, but maybe they top deck. Eh, that's not going to work either. You should have normal summon Mathematician. That was a really bad play. You needed to get Carbonate on in the graveyard. Premature Burial is an interesting play. Blue Thunder is really good. That card is loves its option tokens. And the option tokens are going to make a huge difference because now that's a lot of damage coming through. You're going to have like 500 life points left and David is known for having some burn cards. Speaking of burn cards. Alright, Bastion is really letting down the Academy as a top 8 duelist. Oh, it's the big boy. Hi! That is the last planetary card. We've seen them all today. The big Saturn. All I got to say about Saturn is do not pop it. Whatever you do, do not pop it or you lose the duel. Car Trooper is not going to use it. To the What's that? That is the first time I've ever seen a character not activate Car Trooper's effect. That is the very first time I've ever seen that happen, and I'm not okay with it. Try again. Activate. I guess you still win, which is Big Saturn. I get it, because the AI is not smart enough to not activate its effect. But... Oh, boy. All right, whatever. David knocked out Bastion, 2-0. That was, that was really dumb. All right. Good job, David. David survives for the crew. For the crew. He took out a top eight, but he's got more top eights and worse to deal with. So we're going to go back to our bracket. I like that emote. That's a fun emote. We're going to go back to the bracket, and we're going to see who's up next. So we are now in top eight of the tournament. Our top eight duelists are David, Chaz, Mindy, Axel, Jim, Leslie, Tanaka, and Aster. Actually, these are all really fun characters. It's going to be a fun top eight. We actually have some really fun characters in top eight. Who is going to win Tanaka or Aster Phoenix? Destiny heroes or insects? This should be a lot of fun. Uh, T for Tanaka. Where are you hiding? We need you today. Da, 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 da. Anyone playing Persona 3 recently? You got to, If you play Persona 3, you get to hear Tanaka's theme song. It's great. Every Sunday, you get to hear it. All right. I'm having trouble finding him, though. Oh, there he is, right next to Aster. Of course he was right next to Aster. All right, there we go. Hiding in plain sight. The one place I couldn't find him. And there we go. Aster versus Tanaka. Life is good. I'm also still playing the game. I don't have much free time to play it a lot. Oh, Stratos with Dogma and Fusion Gate. It's already game. It's I, I can already call it. It's game. Good good duel, Tanaka. You tried. I see the opening hand. You lost. I, I, I appreciate that you tried. Doing your best, buddy. <laughs> You're doing your damn best. Three traps will not matter. Destiny Andrew will come back. Don't underestimate to my, look, you, you saw the same opening hand I did. You saw it. Fusion gate into Stratos, into Plasma, into Dragoon. That's about right. That's about right. All right, Destiny and Dragoon is here. Destiny and Dragoon just obliterates that card for 2,600 burn. Oh, that's rough. Oh, man, that's rough. Okay, Tanaka, beat a card with 3,000 attack. It'll come back. 
You got to keep beating it. It will just keep coming back. So you got to keep beating. That's really good. That, that is really... Oh my God. That is a lot of damage in one turn. I appreciate that you did that. Holy shit, you hit Dark Hole! If you had hit a Destiny Hero, I would have called you an idiot. But you hit Dark Hole, you goddamn genius, you. Alright, Destiny Hero Dragoon is here. Here to pop some stuff so it doesn't have to worry about attacking. And your life points are now in critical range. That's pretty good. But the second you hit that Doom Lord, you lose the duel. The second you hit that Doom Lord, the duel is over. And the duel is over. That was nice. Nice try, kid. Nice try. He did his absolute best, and I appreciate that. Kid oh, it's super over. It just the by battle, it's over. Harpy's fe oh no, he just wants to do it. All right, well, he, he could, I didn't expect that. Why would you pick Ch what? Why would you pick Chin Chopper? I guess that was just what they're programmed to pick. It makes sense. That, that makes sense programmer-wise. I'm not going to be mad about that. That's fine. That's fine. Next turn, he just activates Dragoon's effect, and it's over. So, at least he tried. No field spell means no chance. Dragoon, end this battle by using your popping effect. You've done it many times today. <coughs> and that is game, everybody. Aster Phoenix, with low life points, I'll admit, takes game number one with his strongest card. Now we're going to go into game number two and we're going to see if Tanaka can make up for that. Tanaka, come on. This is like fighting the pros. You're fighting a pro-level duelist who got knocked out of the pros only to become stronger because the D killed his dad and he got his card, which is Plasma, which gave him the fusion, which made him good. All right. Howling Insect gets a bow. I would not put that on a Howling Insect. Okay, you are strange, sir. You are strange, sir, for doing so. You should not have given that to Howling Insect. Insect Knight? Sure. Howling Insect? Nah. Intentionally choosing Doom Lord over Stratos? Okay. Okay. Sure, I, 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 I get it. A lot of you love Tanaka, so you'll make up any excuse for a good reason. I do that when Joey's playing. I get you guys. Anytime I see Joey or Chaz playing, I always like, oh, no, no, no. They have an idea behind this. It'll work out. 100%. Monster Born comes through. We're going to bring back Doomy. And Doomy can do it again. Doomy's going to do it again. All right. Fearmonger's here. Next turn, he can start attacking unless Tanaka keeps drawing monsters. The problem is these monsters are banished. Did you really not have a combo so you had to rush recklessly? That sucks. That actually kind of sucks. That was a bad play. Ooh, Celestial's pretty good. Though, they, you know what? They might not attack that. Fearmonger had no target, sadly. There was no, nothing in the grave. Celestial hits Howling Insect. Hey, you know what? If he has Metal Armor Bug, we're about to see it. So that's fine. At least he doesn't have Plasma. That's good. That is good that he didn't draw Plasma. But if he draws Fusion Gate, the game is guaranteed over. You know what? This could work. I want to believe. I want to believe that this could work. Yeah! 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 There we go! Okay! You spent a dark hole on it, but who cares? You, you got big monster. Not even a defender can handle a monster like that. And an insect knight. I love it. Let's go Tanaka. Come on. That's what I want to see. Burn Sage where he's going to be super helpful. All right. Fearmonger will probably bring back Doom Lord. And you'll lose your Metal Armored Bug, but who cares? You already did enough damage. I know you're not really a burn deck, Tanaka, so you're going to need to find just... If he plays some cards, hopefully in attack mode, take advantage of that. If he doesn't, then run him over some other way. Doom Lord did not act... It has to be an attack. Oh, interesting. So it's just there to defend the life points. This man got Doom Dozer! And just... Yeah, he's just going for game. I understand. That is it. Tanaka will take game number two against this man. If he had drawn Fusion Gate, Chain Material would have ended this duel. But no Fusion Gate means the winner is Tanaka. All right, the Doom Doozy. So we're going to go ahead and get into game number three, and we're going to see what happens. Will it be Tanaka or will it be Aster that goes to semifinals of our tournament?
I had a great Super Bowl party with my friends. It was nice and chillax. Nothing, nothing insane, just a nice time. Pot of Greed and Destiny draws for days. He can draw six cards in one turn. He chose to summon first. Interesting. He could he can win the duel. <laughs> I'm looking at his hand, he can win the duel. Oh wow. It sucks to be a fan of uh Oh. Mm. Luckily, Insect Knight can beat that card. It sucks to be a fan of Tanaka right now when you see the hand I'm looking at. Insect Knight can beat it, yep. Classic level 4 beaters is what Tanaka has, his Neo Bug and his, in in and his Insect Knight. He has no Verdant Sanctuary, though, which is why I fear for him, because his hand always falls apart without it. And now a Dark Hole's coming. No, it's not. He's just going for it. Really? Instead of a dark hole, you're just going for it. That was very strange. I do not agree with that play from Master Phoenix. I guess he can now get rid of three cards, but his life points are in critical. He's below half now. And now he doesn't have an extra special summon. Which would have been safe because there wouldn't have been two monsters to destroy the monsters he summoned. All right. He's going to start building up to Plasma now. Resonance gets Doom Doozy. We know it. We know it. The boss is here. The boss is here. Fearmonger is in attack mode. That's pretty scary. Tanaka's in a really good position to win this duel unless he draws a third Drill Dark and a Beater Monster. Doom Doozy is here. Card to be thrown away is Metal Armor. He had two. His mom lets him have two Doom. He gets to have two games of Doom. One on the computer, one on the microwave. And it's over. The winner is Tanaka, knocking out the second strongest duelist and moving into top four of our tournament. Tanaka might have to be readjusted on his uh, bio band. We might have to re-rank this kid. And Aster's still good. Nothing against Aster Phoenix. He's still a great duelist. He beat Tripper Mercury. But, you know, damn. Alright, Tanaka did great. Now we're going to go with Leslie, one of the last American duelists against the strongest duelist at Duel Academy, Jim Crocodile Cook. Because Blair is missing. That is the only reason. All right, Jimmy. Let's see what you can do. Leslie, this is going to be the hardest matchup you've ever had in your entire life. And you struggled against Cyrus, so... I wish you the most luck a person could ever wish of another person. Even though I know it's for nothing. It will not help you. That is a pretty good opening hand. I would have started Armageddon Knight, but that is a pretty good opening hand. All right, Miracle. He always gets that card, I swear. And that gets him Gaia played on the first turn every time. Dude, he's so stacked with that setup. That's such a good play. Because Snatch Stealing Gaia Plate does not help you. You don't get to keep it. Rock Bombardment's going to hurt a little. He's got plenty of cards in the grave for his stuff now. All right, we're going to power up a monster, which won't work when Gaia Plate comes out. And Giant Rat's going to keep him healthy. All right, 1300, Giant Rat's going to keep do, doing its job. That is a terrible use of stuff. That is one of the worst monsters you could have ever taken with Snatch Steel. Like, legitimately the worst. And your opponent was not... It doesn't matter. That was just... Wow. That's a whole new level of just god off. What the fuck just happened? You know what? More rocks... In, I get it. More rocks in the grave means longer time to have Gaia play. But still, wow. Armageddon Knight and a Monster Born would have been a good play, but it won't. Oh! You didn't have enough cards in your hand to use that play, though, so I get what you're doing now. Oh, man. Interesting, Leslie. Still a horrible play. Horrible play. And it will cost you in the end of this duel. But I respect that you're actually doing something. You're actually putting in some work despite your own AI. 
and your opponent not being smart enough to just straight up kill the you should just he should oh you you know what you messed up leslie that that this is part of the problem do you see why you wanted this is why we don't take the giant rats do you understand that now leslie is fighting at least i got to give her credit for that problem is what is she going to do now like actually what strike ninja is going to hurt she can't win with the amount of attack points she has showing it's a little closer, but it's not its not enough, right? Not even close. 800 life points still. You know what? She did pretty good. I'll give her that. She did pretty good. She got him down to an Ukazi. One Ukazi could do it, but she's just not going to be able to... She's not going to finish this off. She got... Did he just set? Did he just set? Jim, Crocodile Cook, lost game number one to Leslie. Oh, oh boy. That, that is wild. Okay, we're going to game number two. Leslie is one duel away from knocking out the number one duelist at Duel Account. Is she better than we thought? She's a really basic deck, all things considered. Is she better than we thought? And they never draw their spells and traps. What the hell are they? I always make the decks with at least like 18 to 20 spells and traps. So what the hell is up with this? Every time, every time he gets down the opening hand. Every single time. Ends a guy for every single time. I swear to God. It's like he pro it's like he's programmed to do it. If anything, she learned from Cyrus. All right, the 400 burn is nice. Oh, early fossil fusion. Holy crap. I mean, it's going to be worth it, all, all things considered, I assume. Because you get a car out of it. Enjoy your car. Uh, Grand Jupiter would put some work in, but it, no way to summon it, so not going to be able to put any work in. But Grand Jupiter would have given her a chance to, to win this duel. Her boss is legitimately one of the better ones. He's going to get another one, isn't he? Holy shit. Oh, familiar knight. Oh, they also have a level four. In defense mode. Interesting. Fossil Tusker burn. Mmm. Mmm, that's bad. Oh, man. Unless the only way you have a chance of winning this is you have to draw a monster reborn or a premature burial. Then you have to summon Grand Jupiter, throw away both Strike Ninjas, and then you somehow win the duel that way. And they have a back row card. That is your only chance of winning this duel. That is not going to help. That It looks like it'll help. It's. Did you just give that to Giant Germ? Did you just give that to Giant Germ? So it could have 600 defense points. Get her, Jim. Get her. Get her. Get her. Go do it. All right. Kick their ass. 500 burn. The car does its job. And the game-winning attack from Jim's mighty Gaia plate. Well, that was fun. <laughs> That's the duel we expect to see from Jim. So now we're going to be going into game number three. And we'll see if Leslie can get lucky again. Or, if honestly, the biggest thing about her deck is if she can't get Grand Jupiter, she can't counter anything. And she hasn't been able to do it for a while. She did against Cyrus. And she hasn't been able to do it for a while, though. And she wasted her Snatch Steel, so I'm going to assume she's going to waste, waste this one, too. She used it on Main Phase 2, for crying out loud. That is just disgusting. There are some things in this world that uh, should not be. This is the first time he did Miracle Rupture. I did just notice that as well. This is the first time. Level 4, you got her. You got her. Str mm, okay, why not? Mm, that's why not. Okay. I understand you want to get it out of the grave so that you don't lose to a fossil fusion, but damn. Gatsu, can you beat the defense mode monster? No. You. No, no, no. No! Fuck! How many times do I have to tell you to stop using... Oh, my God. Okay, well, she won the first duel she messed up with Snatch Tail, right? So maybe, just maybe, 
she'll find a, win the, a way to win the second duel by messing up with Snatch Steel. It, I, I believe. I believe. It, it's possible. Strike Ninjas here. Just don't call the hunt. Okay, you know what? At least there's no monster in your grave now, so that does have some value. The rats have uh, arrived, and the rats will make sure they have rock monsters. Interesting choice, unless it does get its effect from battle. Interesting choice. Uh, Jim? Mm, Jimmy Jam? She's healing you, at least, but Jimmy Jam, what you gonna do? J Jim! You know what? He might have a Fossil Dino that'll pop a lot of the cards, right? Armageddon Knight's really good. You already used a lot of your Revival, though. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, you're one of the top duelists at this school. You can't lose to some random Amer- How is the Slifer Red American student winning? He just needs a Fossil Fusion, and he'll be fine. One card, and he's fine. One Fossil Fusion, because he can use his own Grave. And he's fine. She's healing him. Holy shit! Jim Crocodile Cook throws in top eight! Jimmy is out of here! He was the number one duelist at Duel Academy, but things are gonna change. All right, so Jim, it does remind me a lot of Sarah Taker, where like, but he has way more chances to get the good stuff, so it's crazy that he couldn't do it. It's crazy. Let's go ahead and let's get into our next fight. He got, he got cooked. <laughs> All right, Leslie has done it. An American Academy student has made top four. The next duel is the two best burn st uh, students at Duel Academy. Who is the better burn duelist? Axel Brody's brutal pyro burn or Mindy's cutesy spell trap? I don't know. It's uh, it's a lot of stuff. She has a lot of different. Cutesy beast burn. Let's call it cutesy beast burn. It's burn versus burn. Lots of beast burn versus pyro burn. And I know there's fans for both these characters. So we'll see who is the better burn duelist at Duel Academy. I'm glad that Axel has stepped up. He did horribly in the first two tournaments, so he's actually doing something now. Okay, you put that in attack. You're baiting, right? Because you're about to get Blaze Accelerator. It's happening. But you're baiting, right? I guess you get to heal more than you take, and healing against a burn deck is pretty good. Yeah, the AI does know how to search for Jim. Which is good, because that balances him out. Oh, she got rid of Blaze Accelerator! That balances him out for uh, these uh, uh, these tournaments, so he's not just a monster. All right, Volcanic Slicer, Slicer and Rocket. We already know that she's just going to heal a bunch of life points, which he's probably pissed about. You know how you beat a burn deck? You run heal. <laughs> when you run heal, they just eventually run out of burn cards, and they're just like, oh, son of a bitch. Except Mindy, because her burn card is Dark Snake Syndrome, and that card will win you any duel. She is in a weird situation, though, where she's just getting overpowered, which is supposed to happen. He has good beaters in his burn deck. All right, UFO Turtle comes through. <laughs> that is a lot of burn! 16 plus 3, you took 1,900 burn from one Dez Koala. You should have been using that card aggressively. Oh, no, you just said that. Never mind, she just said that. I understand. I think she's in trouble because unless she has a 2K defender, he's just going to run over her. And now he has Blaze Accelerator again, so he could pop if she gets anything. Mecha Bunny is nice. That's 800 burn um, per bunny. As long as she doesn't have two in her or one in her hand. This is actually pretty good, all things considered. Pretty good burn. She got him below half. She definitely got him below half, which with a burn deck is good. But unless she gets her morphing jar, she might be she might be done for. It was still a great play from Mindy. I just she might be done for. Because she's out of cards. And that trap is apparently useless for this situation. She has one more. This is it. This is all she's got. This is all she's got. Okay. Try Blaze. That's really good. Okay. Things are getting scary. Des Koala. <laughs> all right. Another 1,100 burn from the Des Koala. It's gone. Shit. 
Dimension Wall! She did it! Mindy with the weaker attacking burn deck will take game number one! But either character could have won either character could have won that deck. Or deck duel, whatever. Let's go ahead and get into game number two. So she just held back the trap card because she was waiting for a direct attack. I get it. All right, Axel Brody, you had a pretty good hand. Oh, you have a better hand this time. You already have Tri-Blaze. He already has Tri-Blaze, everybody. All right, Volcanic Shells are nice. Tri-Blaze this early with a Ring of Destruction is very dangerous. TT is nice, unless you just popped a really good card. Let's find out what you popped. You popped a good card, but I understand. I, I can understand. 1900 beaters annoying. Okay, so Tri-Blaze will be a problem, but Mindy could go in for one turn and just get some direct damage off. Interesting. She can now set that card, a nice combo, but is Tri-Blaze the one that can pop back, uh, face downs? I don't remember. I don't know what cards do, but now they know that that's a self, uh, a bird. Soulfire would be valuable if they try out Tri-Blaze can. All right, so Tri-Blaze gets rid of the problematic card and he will burn to make sure he has more shots. Soul of Fire does another 1500 burn, which is insane. And uh, yeah, Mindy's in a bad spot. Tri-Blaze will... Oh! Wow, that was bad. You know what? No, it wasn't. I understand why she did it. She knows that her cards are just going to keep getting popped. So that's why she did it. But what she didn't know is that her opponent does have the beater stuff, so he's not going to just keep popping you. He's going to come after you. But you did do 1,800 back, so that's nice. But without your Dark Room of Nightmare, you're not getting all that extra damage in, and now you're kind of getting screwed. So what are you going to do? One new trap might not be enough. You're going to need a lot more than that. Of course, they might just start attacking you because they are... Oh, don't get Doomfire. Don't do it. Okay, I was going to say, Doomfire would just brutalize her. Interesting! Okay! Oh, she had two Mecha Bunnies in her hand. That's super bad for her. She's in a really bad spot. Mindy has a new hand, but she's in a bad spot. She needs a Dark Hole and a Harpy Spot. She needs everything. She needs every goddamn card she can get. Pop everything or die. Death is the choice. All right. He wins by Tri-Blaze or Volcanic Slicer. He wins. She can't end. She ended her turn. He wins. All right, Axel Brody has done it. All he has to do is Volcanic Slicer. And he Volcanic Sliced her. So with 2,000 life points left, he wins. It was closer, but he wins. So we're going to be going into game number three. Both burn decks have shown their value and where they get their value from. But this will be the one that decides which one is better, at least for today. Which burn deck is the best in Duel Academy? Axel Brody, I'm just proud that he's actually showing up today. This is gonna be this is gonna help his rank a lot, as if that matters. 50 under burn is a great way to open a duel. <laughs> it definitely sucks to be a Mindy fan to see 50 under damage that quickly. Fencing Fire Ferret's one of her good beaters. Granted, that counter could hurt her. She's gotta be careful. Having back row is nice. That is nice. He's a little bricked right now. He could do another 15. Okay, he's done 3,000 burn, but he's bricked. What happened? We already hit our follower goal, right? Oh, God, is he going to tell me every time we get more followers? Thank God. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And 1,700 has happened. Mindy is in a great spot because he is bricked, but if he draws one volcanic rock, he does. That's not good. That is not good for Axel Brody fans. He drew the wrong Blaze Accelerator. Although Mindy doesn't have any other beater monsters. She might set. Oh, God damn it, Mindy. What? If you were going to attack, then attack. If you were going to set, then set. Don't main face two face up Des Koala. Who taught you that? What AI taught you that? You're still going to win, but who taught you that? All right. Burn Queen Mindy continues to hold her name. She is the third strongest duelist at Duel Academy, but that might change after today because she's back in top four. Her ben burn deck has returned to top four, though Axel Brody did amazing today and definitely will be getting some uh, Ranku ups. 
Let's go ahead and check out who's up next. The next duel, the final duel of top eight is the mighty Chaz Princeton, my boy. A guy who I want to see in the grand finals versus one of the last American duelists, David Rabb, the number one student at their American school. Let's see who will win it all. Let me go find the characters and then we're going to have some fun watching them duel. For me, I want Chaz to win more than anything as he is my favorite and honestly, I think he can win this whole tournament now. Um, but David does have some annoying effects, so we might have to see that. Here we go. This is a cannon duel, and Chaz whooped his ass, so he better do it again. All right, Chazzy boy. That's, oh, he started with it. It's over. It's over. That's my boy right there. He already has it. Pile arm dragon. With the pile arm dragon, with the flying Kamakiri, what are you gonna do, David? Are you scared? should be that's a nice card actually that's a nicer card you know what not bad <laughs> you, you killed it i'm not happy about it but you killed it how are you gonna kill this now you already use limiter removal so how will you kill that and not only that but there's back row to deal with now so what are you gonna do All right, Arm Dragon level 5 is going to evolve into that card, funny enough, and Pile Arm is coming back, so you didn't change anything. All right, Arm Dragon level 5 goes in. Card Trooper didn't stand a chance, but it can be used to draw a card, so good job from David. And Pile Arm Dragon does massive damage, and Arm Dragon level 5 evolves into Arm Dragon level 7. David, Dark Hole, or Bust, you're in so much trouble. You've had no back row this whole duel. There's one back row, and it's gone! The one back row, it did not matter. No, 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 duel's over. Duel's over. That's it. Oh, it's super over. Here comes 28, Car Trooper again. Fun, more draw power when you don't even have more turns to use it. And 28. He must have drawn all of his monster cards, just like we've seen a couple duelists do. Chazzy boy takes game number one. That's my boy. Come on, start with the pile armed again and just win this tournament. Come on, man. Someone was crazy enough to already knock out Jim. You can do it. I think Jim was like the one guy that can stop you. Maybe Aster, but Aster's gone too. He got it! Oh, but he has... I, I think he needs specifically an armed dragon to summon it. But whatever, he got it. Who cares? He's gonna get it. Chaz it up, my fans. Chaz it up. You know you want to. All right. Shredder. Oh, that's nice. He's not gonna be able to search. He always uses that to get armed... Ooh, double Shredder. That's a lot of early damage. I'll give him that much credit. A good start from David. I'm not going to say it's not. That was that was all right. Two back row. That's a pretty yeah, pretty good start overall. No way to get pile armed. He did not draw arm dragon, but this card can get him an arm dragon. So as long as he lasts one more turn, which shouldn't be that hard. It's battle footballer for crying out loud. Oh god, he still lives. Thirty two is not enough. Dread gets twin head. Twin head really. At least I'll have another turn. You're fine. All right, Chaz. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Just get a dark hole or something. You'll be good. Everything will work out. That card's nice, too, but you're going to need to... Oh, yeah. Any dragon, huh? All right. Stamping Destruction comes through. We're going to do some... Ma oh! Ring of Destruction gets popped! It was before he... Wait. He should have just chained Ring of Destruction. He's an idiot. David could have won the duel. Premature Burial comes through. No one's going to beat Chaz. Chaz is unstoppable. All right, look what Chaz just did. You can't pretend like someone's going to beat Chaz. Yeah, David's too stupid to chain, then he doesn't deserve to be here. Get him out of here. How to greet? Okay, you're a little lucky. Get him out of here. Iron Call, who cares? You're a little lucky. Get him out of here. Yeah, Magic Cylinder, good. Good damage. Got to respect it. You hit Flying Kamikiri like an idiot. Got to respect it. Get rid of him. All you have to do is... You can even just attack with Pile Arm. You have everything you need. Everything you need. The Arata Ring can activate it on Shredder. Uh, oh, does it say it only targets opponents? Oh, even then, you can just activate it on Flying Kamikiri and do 1,400 damage. Leave them with 200. Call the Haunted comes through for Shredder. He's trying to stay alive, but there comes the guy. 
And flying Kamakiri. Oh my god, he brings the... This Shredder has been summoned more than any other card, but it doesn't have enough attack to end the duel. Arm Dragon level 7 is here. He needed 100 more attack, and he is done for. Get David out of here. No! He drew limiter removal! Chaz! You had that! Shit, he drew his limiter removal. Ah, that Shredder was really good. That Shredder was really good. God damn it. All right, we're going to game three. It's fine. Chaz will get his thing again. And it'll all work out. He's got an Arm Dragon level seven every duel. He's got in his uh, Pile Arm Dragon every duel. It's going to be fine. Let's get back into it. All right, David. You got a little lucky there. That's it. Just got a little lucky. That Shredder gets promoted to Destructor. All right, Chaz's hand, other than the swords, is worse than you'd think. The swords is fine, though. That, that'll help. Foolish Burial is kind of interesting. He throws away his boss. He always will. All right, well. Ah, it doesn't, it doesn't hit the field. He didn't let it happen. The Chaz is smart. This is my boy right here. The Chaz will not allow Premature to work. Well, that's a really dangerous card, too, though. All right, we almost saw the big Saturn again. Luckily, we didn't have to because the Chaz is good. And Swords will make sure that nothing bad happens. No Pile Alarm, but that's fine. Swords will keep my boy safe. And safety is key. We have ourselves a set. Nothing wrong with that. Mass Dragon's nice and safe behind a Swords. Beautiful. Beautiful. You don't even need it yet, but you... Oh, shit! Shit! He still has it. He has Pile Arm Dragon and Swords. He's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. It's fine. He has everything he needs. That's good. Get rid of their buff. It's good. Everything's going to work. Out. Careful. Your life points are a little low, my boy. Chazzy, you're a little low. And he might shred you, which is not good. Because he played that in attack mode. Shit. Why would he do that? He can't attack. Okay, Swords makes them play bad. This is your last turn. Draw the dragon you need. Do you have enough cards in the grave? Fuck! Does he really not have enough cards in the grave? What? How many? No! Come on, man! This was... It was four! He had four monsters! He had four monsters! Chaz Princeton! Freaking list! God damn it! <laughs> he got it every he got pile alarm every time and he still lost. David Rab has done it. We thought American Academy sucked. Let's be let's be real, we thought they sucked. But we're in top four and half of them are American Academy. Shit! Chaz can't get past top eight to save his life. Oh, yeah, he's he's going through that arc now. He's getting it. <laughs> he's getting it. David Rapp has done it. Oh, that F that F bomb was from my heart, though. That was real. That was real. All right. Mindy will fight David Rapp and Tanaka will fight Leslie. Everybody, Mindy and Tanaka are the ones representing Duel Academy. David and Leslie are the ones representing American Academy. It's 50-50, baby. Let's get this going. Who is going to win? American Academy or is it going to be the legendary Duel Academy? Tanaka is your representative right now versus Leslie. Leslie was the one who took down Jim Crocodile Cook, who used to be ranked number one. At Duel Academy, but things are going to change now. A lot of things are going to change now. So, let's get it going. Place your bets while you have a chance. Tanaka versus Leslie. Both Slacker Reds, funny enough. Ooh, she got her boss really early. I like that. I don't like that they use all their equip spells so early, but it's fine. Maybe there will be value. 
All right, Tanaka. Tanaka's good. Howling Insect's really safe. You gotta love it. Pinch Hopper's really good. You might need to get some Monster Slash Spell Trap Destruction to make sure that those Mage Powers don't matter, but you'll be fine. Just buy yourself time until you get it. Thank you very much for following. Uh, we have ourselves a set 5700 attack. Okay. Pinch Hopper gets the Metal Armored Bug. You know what? This might be one of the few things it doesn't get to uh, destroy. Light of Intervention. No more sets. I mean, you could set. You just can't play it face down. So no Man Eater Bug. Ugh, he doesn't have more monsters. That's not good. Eh, it doesn't matter. We have so many followers. 5,700! There you go, Tanaka fans! Tanaka has done it. 5,700. He just needs 2,300 damage. Metal Armor Bug is right there. There's a germ right there. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all he needs. He did it! That is it! Tanaka! He won around the big-ass monster. He didn't care about it. And with that, he is your victor. We have one more, and we'll see if Tanaka goes to Grand Finals, which he hasn't been to since the Duel Academy Season 1 tournament. Here we go. Tanaka versus Leslie. AI finds a way. <laughs> Ooh, Alexi doesn't like Tanaka. Good to know. I would set Giant Germ. I would set Giant Germ. You disagree with me. Okay. Insect Knight, they're both gone. Okay, so that's why, because you were, were going to let it live anyway. Are you going to just Mystic Tomato? There's nothing wrong with that, Leslie. It's a good, solid monster. Fisher's a good, solid card as well. 1,400 damage. Sure, sure. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. You mean she wasted TT. Neo Bug with a buff, sure. Neo Bug with 25, it's a Dark Magician. Granted, you took the damage, but it's still a Dark Magician. It's gonna be real hard to beat the. Ah, shit, I see the Fisher. I forgot about it until I looked back at the hand. Uh oh. Ooh, they're breaking up. That's good. That's good that they're breaking up. It's fine. Things are gonna work out for you. 24, you're a little low on life points, but it's fine because they don't got much left. And I know you won't lose to Giant Germ Burn, so you're in a good spot. You're still all right. You'll lose to Giant Germ Burn because you didn't attack the Giant Germ. All Leslie has to do is go in on your monster. And unless you have that Lair Wire bullcrap, you lose. You actually lose. Actually, Leslie has multiple ways to win. Oh, no! Leslie has to win with... Yeah! Leslie has to win with her boss and her boss's effect! The Grand Jupiter eats the Metal Armored Bug for 5,300 damage, and the Magic Cylinder is real! Magic Cylinder is real! He got her to 13-13! They are tied at the last second! Because she drew the Giant Germ, she couldn't win the way she wanted to. Harvey's Feather Duster weakens the monster, but it's not going to win him the duel. It's just nice that he weakened it. He needs his Doomdozer to beat the Grand Jupiter. The Grand Jupiter's too damn strong. Oh, that is a scary card. Oh, ho, 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 no! He's gonna get it! But the problem is we saw what Leslie just freaking drew. Tanaka doesn't stand a chance. Oh, my head. Tanaka needs two Doom Doozies or he's done for. The Doom Doozy. Pinch Hopper is in attack mode. It wouldn't matter anyway. She'd just eventually win. It is over. There are no hand traps in Tanaka's deck. He tried his very best, but she would have, even if he set, she would have just set it, and then, yeah. Oh, freaking hell. Game number two goes to Leslie. She's really good. I got to give it to her. That Grand Jupiter card is really cool. Having a relinquished style effect is so nice. And you get to, like, and you already have 2,500 attack to add to the attack points. I mean, come on. That's so cool. All right, here we go. The winner goes to Grand Finals. The loser goes to the Bronze Place Breather Match. Let's hope for the best. If you're Dual Academy, you're for Tanaka. If you are American Academy, go for Leslie. Don't forget, her goal in life is to draw. She just wants to draw Yu-Gi-Oh cards. That's why she has a bunch of paint on her outfit. What the fuck is in his hand? What is in his hand? 
in Grand Finals and uh, no, in Semifinals uh, Game Three. What is in his hand? What is doing this to you, Tanaka? You need to fight. You need to fight, Tanaka. Maybe it's a monster reborn. Use it. I don't care. Just use something. It was. Okay. I was, see. I'm smart. I know things and stuff. You got to do what you got to do. Your life points were at risk. I understand. I understand. I don't know what his hand is, but I understand. Strike Ninja versus Strike Ninja. A tale as old as time. Oh. Oh no, most of his traps required an insect. CT is really scary, but it might work in his favor, actually. Yetsufuma remains. Leslie's in a really good spot. Leslie is in a really good spot. He's at 3,200. I could see his field has cracks in it. Harpies doesn't matter if you don't have a monster. It's good that you hit that trap, though, but... What is his hand? You've seen every duel. He has so much insect support. He has, like, a bunch of resonance, a bunch of howlings, a bunch of... Ki I, he has everything he needs. What is happening? He has 100 life points to his name. <coughs> it's too late for that. It's too late for that. You don't get it. Unless you have a trap, you lose. You lose, sir. Tanaka has dropped it. A Fisher is in hand. All she has to do is basic attack with Mystic Tomato. What was his hand? What happened to our boy? Duel Academy is in trouble. American Academy has a character in Grand Finals. She took out Jim. She took someone else out before Jim. I forgot. Um, oh, Cyrus. She took out Cyrus. She took out Jim, and now she's taking out Tanaka. He'll be going to the third place breather match. And the only American duelist left... Or not American, sorry. The only Duel Academy duelist left is the Burn Queen herself, Mindy. Mindy is the last hope of Duel Academy. Oh man, that is crazy. Let's go ahead and get it set up. Can Mindy beat the number one student of American Academy? The number one student being David Rabb. Mindy versus Limda removal. She has a good chance then unless Harpy's Feather and stuff. And Ring of Destruction. Ooh, he's got to be careful. She's got to be. Both of them have burn in their deck, so they both got to be careful. All right. Mindy, Mindy, Mindy. Here we go. Mindy is the last hope of Duel Academy. And if she wins this, she's going to become the king of games of Duel Academy. Harpy's Feather, they both have it early, so they're both going to lose it. Wait, Mindy losing her back row is way more important than him losing his back row. She didn't have any. Oh, that's a bad start for her. That's actually a bad start for her. That's not good. The Shredder will be used to kill the Ferret, but the Ferret can kill the Shredder. All right, an eye for an eye. Iron Call brings back the Reflect Bounder, but it's just for damage. He's only doing it for damage. It's like he just played a spell card that did 1,700 burn. All right. Mindy has Dark Hole, which that was the only way she was ever going to kill Battle Footballer. She hasn't used Firewind Pegasus since Season 1, so she's not using it anymore. Reflect Bounder is on a very good side of the field. That's amazing. A great steal from Mindy. She's winning by battle. Holy crap, Mindy is winning by battle. And David is bricked. David is bricked. Oh, it's over. If Mindy draws one monster with 1,000 attacks, she wins the first duel. Burn is nice, but you need a monster. She's got it. That is the end of the duel. The Dez Koala goes in. His Reflect Bounder attacks him. And that is it. Mindy wins game number one. All right, but I've seen Tanaka win game number one, and that didn't end so well. So let's go ahead and see what happens in game number two.
All right. Oh, we got his big Saturn this time with Car Trooper, with Blue Thunder, and a Machine Assembly line. He's in a good spot. He is in a good spot. I know, right? Finally, she summoned that in main phase one. Blue Thunder's here. TT's not going to allow it. That card is annoying. Oh, Mecha Bunny. But Mecha Bunny would have died, so I understand. Nimble Momonga, that's the best you got. Mecha Bunny. You are using your cutesy burn. Here comes the cutesy burn, everybody. Funny enough, that Mecha Bunny is getting buffed by the uh, machine assembly line, I assume. That's kind of funny. He has his legendary limiter removal, and if he doesn't use it early, Mindy's in a great spot if she gets Dimension Wall or Magic Cylinder. But we'll see if she does. Machine assembly line is going to be used for revival. Blue Thunder is back. I would do that during main phase one, but he's not me. Oh no, did it count Mecha? It counted Mecha Bunny, huh? Never mind. Ignore me. Iron Call, not necessary, but yeah. So, oh, you could have just Car Trooper. That was a horrible use of that. That, I mean, you get to keep the token. But that was a bad, unless she has a Muddy in her hand. Nope. That was a bad use of limiter removal. Holy crap. The token remains. Mindy is rocking a 7,600 life points, and he doesn't have crap to say about it. Look at this. That was, oh my god, that was bad. <clears throat> she doesn't have many monsters that can beat the token, mind you, but still. I, I, I don't like your situation. She'll just continue to heal. She doesn't care. She can car trooper all day, too. She knows what you have. He, he could be Saturn if he wants, but I would just use the option tokens. Yeah, exactly. I guess you didn't have to... That, why are you the only character not using car trooper's effect? Every other character I have uses car trooper's effect. This was not the worst iron call, as it did earn him another option token. But Mindy's in a great spot as long as she gets one good... Oh, I forgot iron call negates effects. I'm an idiot. Ignore me. And the giant rat keeps her healthy. Bye-bye. Yeah, you're going to wish you used that Iron Call for Big Saturn, because now, not looking too good. I know you can just car trooper again, but those rats can just get more rat. How are you getting all your car troopers? What the hell? And you're the one character in the game that won't use it. For whatever reason. So you're like the... Oh, oh, finally. Okay, all of a sudden. All of a sudden, you just feel like using it. And just, just, just something, something clicked in your brain? I don't even know. David's weird. David's a weird guy. Ooh, yeah, she already used Nimble Bamonga. She's out of Earth, so she had to pick Morphing Jar. Shame. Anything good in the grave? Ooh, that is good. You can get rid of its downside. Oh, that didn't matter at all. I understand that you're still going to lose Card Trooper. You know that, right? She's not attacking with Morphing Jar. You know what? That's actually better. Who cares? I mean, no, it's not better, but it's fine. No matter what, they were going to be able to get another card trooper, so... Even though she didn't know that, it's fine. He has two big Saturns now. He's throwing away a lot... Ooh, bad hits there. Really bad hits. Okay, he lost Harpies. He lost Ring of Destruction. He lost Call of the Haunt. He lost a lot of good cards to make that play happen. Yeah! Mindy Burn! He is down! He's really low on life points. 25. One Dark Magician could end this duel. He does have this cyber thing, but it's way too late for that to matter. He should have had that. When he gets that at the beginning of the duel, I'm sure he's going to be doing way better, but still. All right. Car Trooper again. You're running. Dude, dude, dude. What's your deck count? Hold up. Hold the phone. You only got 10 cards left. Calm down. You only got 10 cards left. You got to be more careful. You are literally with... You have, you have like 1,700 life points and 10 cards in your deck, and she is going to win this duel. She, you have 200 life points left. You have 200 life points left against a burn deck. You have 400 attack point monsters in attack mode. She has Pot of Greed. You're going to lose. Monster aboard anything. Sure, it doesn't matter. You pick whatever you want. David Rab got 2 0 by Mindy. Okay, you take 300. Who the hell cares? And with exact damage, Mindy will win the duel. Mindy will win the duel. Great play by Mindy. She is the last hope of Duel Academy, and she pulled it off. She is going to be going to, uh, to Grand Finals. But 
What matters now is we are gonna have our third place breather match between Tanaka and David. So let's have our third place breather match and let's see how they do. The third place breather match is the two strongest male students from the schools, Tanaka and David, and the two strongest female students made it to grand finals, which are the strongest students in the game. Or in the game, uh, it's not even a game, in our series. It's easy to say game because I do Let's Plays every single day. So Mindy move forward. David's going to be taking on Tanaka, going for that bronze medal. And we're going to see who wins this. Everybody get ready to rumble. Where's Tanaka? There he is. Let's do this. Mindy was already pretty good even in season one. She got like, what, top 16 to top eight. And then she got top three, which is insane. And now she's in top two. So she's been improving every single week. Every single tournament she's in, she's improved. So let's watch these two go at it and let's see who's getting that bronze medal. Guy powers a great start. It's going to give him a huge advantage, though the opponent does have Cyber Summon Blaster this time. Please don't just limit her move. David's so stupid. It's just like Dark Hole all over again. Tanaka would be Prince of Games now. That is correct. Of course, it won't feel like he deserves it if he doesn't beat David. I might just call him Elite if he doesn't beat David. It doesn't always have to be a prince. Neobug is here. That's a lot of burn both ways. David does love his burn. Monster Born says, no, you're going to take the 35, whether you like it or not. All right, 17, 23. That's really painful. And David's in a bad spot as he has no hand. Yeah, that's a great card. Summon it. I appreciate that that was the best thing you could do. I feel so bad for David right now. Tanaka just ran him over. Tanaka just ran him over with a truck, and that truck's name is Insect Knight. All right. That is the end of game number one. Tanaka just destroyed David. And it looks like the bronze medal, we're close. The bronze medal will be going to Duel Academy if Tanaka can keep that up. So let's get into game number two, and let's see if uh, Tanaka can do it. Or if David will get a better hand and make a comeback happen. Double card trooper. He doesn't use them very well, so I don't know if I want him to. Pot of greed. A set. Burden Sanctuary is a great start for Tanaka. That card is so nice for his deck. Uh, card trooper is probably the best start, but you're not smart enough to know that. Howling and Set's always a great start from Tanaka. Gets him a nice card with the Verdant Sanctuary. Nothing wrong with that. Tanaka's setup earns him another Howling Insect, which is fine because he's just going to special summon probably a Pinch Hopper, right? Yep, Pinch Hopper. Nothing wrong with a Pinch Hopper, especially if he has one of his big metal armored bugs in his hand. That card has devastated a lot of powerful duelists. And it looks like he's going all out. He's spending every option he's got, and he doesn't want to give his opponent any more time. Oh, boy. Pinch Hopper just destroyed itself for a reason, and it's because he wanted to use this card's effect. He really cared about the Virgin Sanctuary. But the real reason is because he's got his Metal Armor Bug. His OG boss monster is here, and you must fear it. David's already in critical condition. He's got four monsters to deal with, and life is not good for him. Yeah, no, he's done. He's di Get David out of here. David is not ready for Tanaka. Wait, he got Big Saturn! He got Big Saturn! What? The boss is here! At the last second, David got his Big Saturn boss monster! The Metal Armored Bug is about to get run over! If you pop the big Saturn, you win. I'm telling you because I like you, Tanaka. If you pop the big Saturn, you win the duel. Okay. If David plays anything weak in attack mode, we know what he's gonna ha what's going to happen. Shredder's not that weak, so I won't consider it. Howling and set being destroyed is safe. A cylinder would be real nice right about now. It's not a cylinder. He would have used it right there. Okay, Tanaka's got plenty of monsters to summon at least. How many Lairwire? I think two. 
he has two layer wires. Pin Chopper is on the field, which means Metal Armor Bug is possible, but it can't beat the big Saturn. And it can't win the duel off of Shredder. Harpies! It's the end of the duel! The big Saturn! Wait, does that count? No, it counts as Premature's effect popping in. So it doesn't matter! The Doom Doozy! The Metal Armored Bug! The Insect Knight! Get in there! End the duel! Tanaka will take the Bronze Medal! Tanaka has done it. David Rab was a great duelist today. He won some really hard duels, but he couldn't get past Mindy. He couldn't get past Tanaka. He has to take fourth. What a shame. So with fourth place being taken, we're going to go back over here. And uh, we're going to give Tanaka that nice shiny bronze medal. He's been first before. He's been bronze in the future. People said that he's been falling behind, but look at him now. Third place. Give him some credit. The next and final duels of the day. It's grand finals between American Academy and Duel Academy. Leslie versus Mindy. Who is the strongest of the strong? Which duelist is going all the way? Who will do it? Leslie has destroyed the best of the best that Duel Academy has to offer. She beat Jim. She beat Tanaka. She beat the mighty Cyrus. <laughs> But can she beat Mindy, the more tactical duelist of Duel Academy? Mystic Tomato with a nice buff. So now Mindy's defenses don't matter. 34. Well, actually, Giant Rat's still pretty helpful. Giant Rat will still be helpful because that Mystic Tomato may be str Oh, the AI. Gotta love that AI. Doesn't know how to play its own game. Thanks for healing Mindy. She loves that. Monster Born's a little weird, but, you know, to each their own. You can pop your own giant rat. It'd be really funny, but you don't need to. At least you tried. You got rid of Widespread Ruin for that. It was totally worth it, Mindy. 100% worth. You got swords with the burn deck. You're in a great spot, even though you haven't drawn any of your spells or traps that do burn, so... Get your Dark Room of Nightmare, get your or Dark Snake Syndrome, get your Dark Room of Nightmare, get, get started. Hurry up. And keep healing. Yeah, your opponent messed up. Unless they get their Tribute Monster. They really messed up. That's a nice thing to do. You didn't need to do that. It's fine. You got life points. Uh, that's a nice thing to have. Swords with the freaking Stealth Bird. Another rat. How'd you get all... I'm sorry. How'd you get all your rats? Reasoning is super good. It could try to get their uh, Grand Jupiter card. Level 8 was selected to stop Jupiter, so even if they did get it, it wouldn't work. Level 4 is what they got, though. That's 5 monsters, but 5 monsters don't matter when Swords says no. But the second Swords runs out, this is really scary. The second Swords runs out, you're in a bad spot. The Rat combo, of course, so this will be used. Even though you stop the healing, it's still nice because you get 2 extra monsters out of the deal. Safe monster. Fun monster. That could do burn. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. And you still have time to put it in defense mode. So really good for Mindy. Good play. Mindy has matched her opponent in terms of monsters, and I respect that. Not anymore, but it was still respectable when it happened. So, Mindy, I would hide in defense mode if I were you. It's probably the right play. I, yep, keep doing that. That's doing real good. You did 3,000 burn with that. Totally worth. And the rest is just up to you. This is going to be a tough one, guys, because now they're going to start going in. And the Nimble Momonga is not going to work so well. Mecha Bunny still works, though, so that was a bad target. Unless they already have Nimble Mamongas on the field. We do not know. All right. There we go. Stealth Bird is gone. Mecha Bunny now starts the burn. Very nice. One more bunny would be nice. There we go. They know which one's the bunny, so they're going to target it. You are at half life points. Leslie has dropped to half. But Mindy has no back row and is running out of monsters. By next turn, she's going to be start taking heavy damage. Oh, wait, the Nimble Momonga had just got targeted. Oh, my God. Mindy, you crazy person. You still have so much time. But you need your spells. You need your traps. You need to end this duel as soon as possible because your opponent is coming for you. Fencing Fire Ferret is a great way to do that. That is a beautiful card. That is a beautiful card. Great job, Mindy. Adjust Desserts would be so good. She runs it. It would be so good. All right, Nimble Bamanga is gone. We're going to see them all go away. They're probably too scared to attack the Fencing Fire Ferret, though, because the AI is 
not willing to lose the mage power card. Oh god, this duel's over. Mindy's got a bunch of new burn. Deskwalu loot is gone. That's a big shame. Oh no! It was the perfect timing! Deskwalu does 2,000 burn! And Mindy has a whole new hand! Game oh, Grand Jupiter. Game number one seems all but over. 500 extra burn. All Mindy has to do is 900 burn with five cards in hand. Five cards. Six cards. All you, okay, you can't use flip effects for burn, but you have to do burn. That will help. That will help. That will win. Oh, you can't set Stilfer! Stilfer can't go face down! Stilfer can't go face down! The strike ninjas are going in! Oh no, Mindy doesn't have it! She has so many life points! Mindy healed so much! Yes! Trap hole with spikes! Nope, Strike Ninja stops it, but whatever. Dark Snake Syndrome needs a little bit of time. It needs two turns to kill. It needs two turns to kill. Even with that uh, extra 600 burn, funny enough. Mindy needs to hold on without any flip effects, which a lot of her tech does rely on. Mecha Dog Marin! Marin goes in! Marin explodes the duel! Mindy will win! Mindy will win. Game number one, at least. Game number one goes to Mindy in Grand Final. She might actually do it. She might be the savior of Duel Academy. Let's see if it happens. We're going to game two. Leslie already has Jupiter. That's pretty good. Harpies against Mindy is really good. Giant Germ's amazing start. I love it. Really good plays from Leslie here. That's great, but Harpies. Nimble is not going to... Oh, they did that was stupid. Horrible use of Magic Cylinder. That might have been the worst use of it. That's fun. Oh, this duel's gonna be fun. <laughs> Holy shit. Harpies, get rid of it all. Yeah, no. It would have been fun if we got to see the Dark Snake, but let's see what traps we lose. Dark. Oh, we lost Call of the Haunted and Dark Hole. Or, I mean, Trap Hole with Spikes. And Mindy is going to gain life points to make up for it. So Mindy lost a lot, we have to admit. All she has is a Nimble Momonga and one card in hand, so she's in a lot of trouble. And Grand Jupiter can come out whenever they want them to, which is a very problematic card. Dark Room again. Okay, you're lucky you have a Dark Room of Nightmare, but you don't have much burn and you're out of cards. Mage Power on Strike Ninja. You love doing that play. Nebo Momonga is gone, and no, no matter how much defense you had, it doesn't matter because the Mage Power was top decked. Yeah, Des Koala was supposed to be tanky enough. But it does not matter because they top decked a mage power. Ooh, Mindy's in a really tight spot right now. She needs her own harpies or dark hole. Monster Born seems nice, but it won't be enough. Don't attack Giant Germ like an idiot. Jesus Christ. All right, well, Mindy's going to have probably have to fight Jupiter. That planetary card is a coming. That was the worst play she could have made. Doesn't even have to fish her if he doesn't want to. Her boss monster is here. Leslie's boss of Grand Jupiter is here. 3,200 damage coming in. Mindy's Dark Hole or Bust. It is legitimately Dark Hole or Bust right now. Bust it is. Get rid of him. Now get rid of her. Leslie, take it to game three. Mecha oh, that buys her a turn. Mecha Bunny legitimately buys her a turn because the Intervention of Light wasn't on the field yet. This bought Mindy one turn to get Dark Hole. Mindy is still standing, which I'm impressed with. But none of her cards do 30, or sorry, how much burn? 5 plus 3, 800. No cards in her deck do 4,800 burn. 
So she's going to need to literally win the duel with a Dark Hole. It's the only card that matters. She can't even flip effect anymore. No Stealth Birds, no nothing, no Dez Koala. One Trap won't make the difference because she only has 3,200 life points left. It take, Any of these monsters can win the duel. The game-winning attack goes in, and it's over. Mindy drops game number two. American Academy is back. The winner of this tournament will be decided in Grand Finals match three, or game three of the match. This is for everything. Will American Academy take it and make Duel Academy look like a bunch of losers? Or will Duel Academy come back thanks to the Burn Queen Mindy? I don't think anyone would have predicted Mindy versus Leslie in the Grand Finals. I don't think any of you even cared about Leslie. You're like, who the hell is this? She's good. Leslie's good. Give her some credit. She doesn't even want to duel. She wants to draw cards, but guess what? She's also good at dueling. Armageddon Knight comes through. Jesus Christ, Jupiter, super early. That is an early planetary Jupiter. You are in so much trouble, Mindy. Mindy is in a lot of trouble right now. The rat will not die, and the rat will die. In game three, that opening hand seems pretty stacked against Mindy. The Grand Jupiter will throw away Magic Cylinder, which is fine. It doesn't work on Mindy anyway, if you really think about it. Grand Jupiter is in a very nice position, and Mindy has nothing. Mindy has something. <laughs> Take it back. But the Snatch Steal, Mindy doesn't know. Oh, well, Swords. Swords. Mindy doesn't know, but it's fine. Swords. Swords. That saved her entire life. Grand Jupiter will throw away two cards. It hungers. It hungers. The Fencing Fire Ferret can't do it. You had to crash while you had the chance, but Mindy didn't know. Giant Rat is here aggressively, even though it's probably going to get eaten. How hungry are you, Jupiter? You're real hungry. Jupiter's real hungry. It's the strongest monster of the day in the final duel. The strongest monster is the Grand Jupiter. Call of the Haunted comes through. Giant Rat doesn't matter except if you know Harpy's Feather Duster. No, it doesn't matter at all. Jesus Christ. Strike Ninja is here. Strike Ninja can't attack yet. This is it. Mindy's out of cards. Mindy bought as many turns as she could, but Grand Jupiter is hungry. So, you know what? That's great. Get some burn going. Get some burn going. This is what you're known for, Mindy. Get down. Grand Jupiter uses its effective special summon. It weakened itself just in case there was a magic cylinder. What a great play. And by stealing Fencing Fire Fairy, they have more attackers. Amazing play by Leslie. This is the best duelist I've seen. Dimension Wall will still do good. Magic Cylinder gets wasted. No! Mindy even attacked for us. They would make this mistake. Mindy didn't know. She wasted it. Oh, fuck. She wasted it. Unless she has a burn card already, she's in trouble. She needs a burn card already. She has to destroy her own ferret. That's nice, but you have- Yo, Stealth Bird, they never killed it! They never killed it! The unstoppable Jupiter has been stopped! Mindy has won for Duel Academy! Duel Academy will take it, even with the misplay. Leslie was an amazing duelist. Her Grand Jupiter card was an awesome monster with an amazing effect. But at the end of the day, the planetary cards were stopped by none other than our favorite Burn Queen. Mindy has done it in Sunday's tournament of Duel Academy versus American Academy. So, let's take a look at our bracket, walk through some memories, and just enjoy what has happened. Today was an easily top five tournament for me. This is one of my favorites. There was so much bullshit, but at the same time, there were so many cool duels. I'm going to give it to it. Top five. Loved it. So, Mindy gets first place. She will be known as our king of games. Uh, sorry, let me scroll. Um, Leslie gets second. Amazing job for an American Academy student. No one expected the Grand Jupiter to be the biggest threat, and it was. Tanaka was incredible today. He beat some people that he never was able to beat before, and he got himself a bronze medal. David Rabb was a really good duelist, but he fell off once he had to fight the two top duelists of Duel Academy. Chaz Princeton, amazing duelist who threw, broke my heart against David. Axel was a great burn duelist, but not as good as Bindi, or Mindy, 
Jim Crocodile Cook was the best duelist, but now he is not. Astro Phoenix was the second best duelist, but now he is not. That is it. That is our American Academy versus Duel Academy duel or tournament. I had a lot of fun with you guys this weekend. Get ready for next week. Next week, we have two more tournaments, Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to keep it going until I'm partner. Two tournaments a weekend, and they're going to be just as fun as today's. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. If we can hold on to 100 average viewers, well, it's 75, but I personally, I want to hit 100. 100 average viewers, I know we can get that partnership. Let's do it, guys. Thank you all. You're awesome.